Ukraine as Friday represented a year since their invasion by Russia. You've likely read the statistics on refugees, displacements internally and externally, and the number of deaths, both Ukrainian and Russian. We, of course, prayed and continue to pray for peace and an end to the conflict. Now, you may not know this about me, but I'm also a Sunday school teacher to some wonderful children in Bromley. And like many of us adults, they struggle to see why so much is happening around the world that's causing them anxiety and fear. One of the verses in scripture I tend to share with them is taken from the book of Philippians. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds. Let us pray. Most gracious Father, we pray for your continued wisdom and blessing upon our Madam Mayor and to all present in this meeting. Bless this time tonight, guiding thoughts and words. I pray that we would seek to follow your words of direction taken from the book of Thessalonians. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor everyone. Love and serve joyfully. And the blessing of God Almighty be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thank you. As we proceed to our formal business, can I confirm that the meeting is being live streamed? And can I remind all members to remember to speak clearly into the microphone throughout the meeting and to turn them on and off as required? There is no need to pick up the microphones or move them. Please avoid touching the microphones with your papers uh, while speaking, because unfortunately that does cause discomfort to people with a hearing loop. So we come to item one, um, the report of apologies for absence. Who do we have that is absent? Thank you. Declarations of interest, item two um, is declarations of interest. Do members have any declarations to make in respect of tonight's business? No, thank you. Item three is to sign, oh, that's very useful. Thank you very much. Um, the item, item three is to sign the minutes of our meeting um, on the 12th of December 2022 as a correct record. Are the minutes of the last meeting agreed? Apologies, Madam Mayor. Um, on big page 11, um, it quotes me as referring to Labour embers rather than members. So it'd be nice <laughs> if that could be corrected. Indeed. Right, noted. Thank you very much. <laughs> Is there another? Okay, thank you. Um, and before we proceed any further, I will allow Councillor Sean Slater to make a personal statement. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for this opportunity to put forward my public apology. I would like to apologise unreservedly to Council colleagues and to the public for a tweet that I sent in December in response to a news article about an alleged rape. My aim was to highlight the issue of the exploitation of women in Plumstead, where I lived for a number of years. However, I recognise it can be read very differently. As soon as it was brought to my attention that it was the case, I deleted the tweet. It was not my intention to cause any hurt or offence, and I apologise wholeheartedly for that which was caused. I'm not ashamed to admit that I'm fallible and I've made a mistake. I now understand that with the privilege afforded me as a councillor to better serve my community, comes the responsibility to reflect more deeply in what I say and post online. To this end, I have deactivated my Twitter and enrolled on a course regarding interacting online and equality and inclusion. I'm grateful to be able to take important learnings from this incident and be a better counsellor going forwards. 
I apologise unreservedly for my mistake and pledge to be a better going forwards as I continue to serve my community. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Slater. Item four. Item four is to deal with questions. We have eight questions for oral reply from members of the public. All questions are in the agenda and have been put out in the gallery and do not need to be read out. The first question is from Mr Thomas Murray to the Chairman of General Purposes and Licensing Committee. Would Mr Murray please come forward? Seems like a very long walk, doesn't it, Mr Murray? Please press the microphone. Councillor Pauline Tunnicliffe to reply. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Good evening, Mr Murphy, and thank you so much for your question. As there are no selected elections in Bromley this year, our next scheduled elections are the GLA elections on the 2nd of May 2024. We are taking a soft touch approach to raise awareness of the new voter ID requirements. We are now in the process of creating new pages on the Council website outlining the new provisions of the Elections Act 2022, including the requirement to produce photographic ID at polling stations. This will include a link to the Voter Authority Certificate application page on the new Government Online Service. In the meantime, the Electoral Commission launched its public awareness campaign in January 2023 across England, not just in election areas to ensure voters un to understand the changes. This includes adverts on national television and radio. Next year here in Bromley, we will undertake an extensive and targeted local awareness raising campaign. This will include updating the council website, distributing posters and leaflets in prime locations and to local community organisations, using social media, Facebook and Twitter, and issuing timely local press releases. In addition to these awareness activities, details of the new voter ID requirements will also be included on the poll cards, which will be sent to every eligible voter in Bromley towards the end of March next year. Thank you. Mr Murphy, do you have a supplementary question? Thank you very much. The second question is from Ms. Susan Moore, to the Chairman of the General Purposes and Licensing Committee. Would Ms Moore please come forward? Thank you. Councillor Tunnicliffe, to reply. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And thank you very much, Mrs Moore, for your question. Where an individual does not have one of the accepted forms of photographic ID, they can apply for free for a photo authority certificate from Bromley or their local authority. We are in the process of creating new pages on the council website outlining the new provisions of the Elections Act 2022, which I referred to in the previous question. And this will include the requirement to produce photographic ID at a polling station. This will include a link to the Voter Authority Certificate Application page on the new Government Online Service. We here in Bromley will be undertaking an Equalities Impact Screening and full assessment on the new measures being introduced through the Elections Act 2022, including voter ID, and the impact on any group of voters with one of the nine protected characteristics. This should ensure that any barriers to participation are identified and, where possible, removed, and voters are not disenfranchised or put off vote voting, whilst ensuring the effective implementation of the changes and maintaining the integrity of the elections. I don't know if you are aware, but Bromley was one of five local authorities, along with Gosport, Swindon, Watford and Woking, selected by the Cabinet Office to conduct voter ID pilots at the local elections in May 2018. Following the election, both the returning officer's finding and the Electoral Commission's evaluation indicated that there was no evidence of any specific group of people who struggled with the ID requirements or that ID requirements significantly deterred voters from voting. Thank you. 
Ms Moore, do you have a supplementary question? Is that working now? Hi, thank you so much. Um, some of that's quite reassuring, yeah. Um, so some other local councils have done calculations on how long it would take to put together all the resources and the time and capacity to produce the idea that people the idea that people will need. Have Bromley started to do any calculations or start to think about the amount of work and person hours, et cetera, that it would actually take to deliver the ID for people who currently don't have one? I don't specifically know the answer to your question, but I have every confidence in Carol Ling, who is responsible for this part of the council and her team to ensure that that will happen. But if you have any further queries or you would like some more information, I'm happy to email Mrs Ling tomorrow and I can come back to you on that. Thank you. Councillor Falthrop, you wish to speak? Well, uh, to ask a supplementary question, uh, Madam Mayor, thank you for your indulgence. Um, is Councillor Tunnicliffe aware that during the trials that took place uh, in 2018, um, actually the turnout wasn't affected at all by voter ID? And one of the most remarkable things, Madam Mayor, was that actually more people spoilt their ballot papers than were turned away and deprived of vote. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Forthrop. Yes, I am aware of that. And there were very, very few issues, I think a ha matter of a handful, and those um, voters returned and voted as far as I'm aware. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Casey. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I wonder if um, uh, Councillor Tunnicliffe could possibly answer, are we aware of how many incidences of voter fraud we'd had in Bromley previously, say just for the local elections? Again, I can't answer that specifically this evening, but I'm happy to come back to you, Councillor Casey, with an answer. Thank Thanks, you. Please. Councillor Gill? Uh, yes, if I could follow up on that question. Uh, is Councillor Tunnicliffe aware of any incidents of voter fraud uh, in the London Borough of Bromley? I'm not Councillor Gill. Thank you. As we're at the beginning of the evening, can I remind us that we have a very meaty agenda in front of us and we will be taking both motions. So if we don't want to be here until midnight, we might like to be succinct. Just a reminder. Thank you. Right. Question three is from Angela Wilkins to the leader of the council. Ms Wilkins, would you like to take a seat, please? Councillor Smith. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> Madam Mayor, I'm advised that the Assistant Director for Integrated Commissioning discussed the plans with two of the key service providers located there on the 29th of November and the 8th of December. The Chief Executive and I met with BVST's Chief Executive <coughs> on 19th of January, and I am advised that conversations remain ongoing. Do you have a supplementary question, Ms Wilkins? I do, Madam Mayor. I like the new system, by the way. Um, thank you, Councillor Smith, for, for your response. It strikes me that the decision uh, in principle to, to sell this property was made by this council in December. And on the basis of that, I would just like to ask the leader of the council whether or not he feels it was uh, or it would have been better if members had been aware of the fact that the trustee, that the tenants, etc., in Community House do not intend, uh, most of them, in fact, virtually all of them, to my knowledge, are not wishing to move to the direct line premises. Now, the question really is, would it not have been better to have had an informed decision made by this council? In other words, councillors would have been aware in advance, had there been consultation, that the tenants were not prepared to move? Thank you, Councillor Wilkins. Madam Mayor, we had two informed debates, one at the Executive, one at full council. Uh, members were fully aware um, of the decision that was being taken. And I'd remind uh, all concerned uh, that it isn't as if the charities that are based there aren't going to have a home. They, are stay, they will stay there as protected tenants if they wish to, even if and when the building is sold. They have a two-year 
uh, two and a half year protection over the fact they are trying to turn it into an asset of community use, which we wish them the very, very best of luck over. Um, that featured in the conversation with the chief exec and I. So no, apart from the fact that the process was speedy, it formed part, as you know, of the operational property review. Um, it was a decision taken around many council properties. Um, ultimately, as I told the last full council, um, anyone that wants to move to better, more modern offices will be very, very welcome if they wish to, but there's no compulsion and no one's trying to force anybody to do anything they don't want. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Um, thank you, so I, I made you councillor then for a moment, so I do apologise. <laughs> Miss Wilkins, I must get used to that. Um, the fourth question is from uh, Richard Honus uh, to the Portfolio Holder for Transport, Highways and Road Safety. Would you please come forward? Councillor Bennett. Uh, defect measuring 40 millimetres is the level at which we repair. But in the case of, say, a pedestrian crossing across a road, we look at the lower one for pedestrian safety. Do you have a sub uh, supplementary question? Yes, I do. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Bennett, for your answer. Um, I've been monitoring now a residential street in my area in St Mary Cray called Elizabeth Way, which has uh, been suffering from severe deterioration of the road surface for a while now. In fact, I first reported potholes in that road about, I think my first report was in July 2021. I've subsequently re-reported that particular street uh, on numerous occasions, at least three or four times since then, as the road surface has deteriorated on Fix My Street. Uh, a wonderful portal which I do quite enjoy using. Um, however, every time I report it, I keep getting the reply that the uh, deterioration does not fit the criteria, does not meet the criteria um, for fixing. Um, I went and had a look at it today, and it certainly has met that criteria on a number of occasions when I've been told it didn't. Uh, I've also heard rumours that there are plans for that street to be resurfaced, which would be wonderful. Um, could Councillor Bennett uh, confirm or, um, or clarify whether that street is due for uh, resurfacing? Uh, and if not, if I put another report on, will it be fixed? <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, I understand from your ward member that it's on the list. Obviously, I don't carry the 34th Street are going to be done in my head. Uh, but if I could just say there are 100... There are you know, 13 teams out at the moment repairing streets. They're doing about 70 a day. Um, this is not quite the time to do most of them because once we get to April and the weather improves, then actually the repairs will stay in place. But we do have 537 miles of road in Bromley with the biggest London borough, and that would stretch from here to Zurich. So it does take some time, and, and you appreciate this is a national Absolutely. and indeed an international problem. Absolutely. But I, I can reassure you, your road is actually one of the 34. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. The fifth question is from Jew Owens to the portfolio holder for public protection and safety. If you'd like to come forward, please. Thank you. Councillor Angela Page, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Ms. Owens, for your question. There are a wide range of actions, either in full or part funded by the authority, such as our CCTV network and street lighting. Regarding specific projects to make Bromley Street safe for women, this spread, this spend is spread over several service areas and it's mainly officer time working with partners. Therefore, there's no specific budget, but it's estimated at about £100,000. Such projects include the licensing team carrying out anti-drink spiking publicity and publicising Ask Angela. And the community safety officers also work with churches on street pastors and encouraging licensed premises to sign up to the Night Safety Charter. Do you have a supplementary? Yes, I do. Thank you for your response. I was wondering if you could advise whether these measures have been successful and how such success has been measured. 
Thank you for the supplementary. That's a very difficult one because obviously we're working with a lot of partners. Um, when we do put in for funding for from the mayor's office, etc., um, we don't get much come back because we're considered to have very safe a very safe borough. Um, so I can only go on that um, that side of things. Thank you. Thank you. Have a supplementary, Councillor Jim? Uh, yes, I do. Thank you, Madam Mayor. It's a very quick one. Just asking the portfolio holder for clarification whether she meant £100,000 per year or £100,000 over the four years. That's per year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next is the second question from Angela Wilkins to the Leader of the Council. Would you like to come forward? Councillor Smith. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, uh, the answer is A and C in equal measure. The Council will not be able to continue funding C to the extent that we would all prefer to see and do so in future unless it takes numerous very difficult decisions such as A, but both are inextricably linked. That's the decision to do so in December. Ms Wilkins, do you have a supplementary question? Yeah, I do. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Councillor Smith. Given that the decision to sell was made in the context of an assumption that the tenants would move, and given that Councillor Smith has just confirmed that the uh, obtaining the maximum capital receipt is one of the priorities of the Council, could you please explain to me, or could you reconcile, um, why the decision has been made in such a hurry to sell this property with sitting tenants. I know the assumption was that those tenants would move. They're not going to. So can you reconcile that for me, please, and they need to get best value? Very easily. Um, it achieves best value. It helps us to achieve capital income, which we need for other projects, such as house sales, house buying. Um, it's an investment property, and we deem it to be the correct thing to do to sell it now. Um, as I've said, it isn't as if the current tenants are going to be homeless. All that will happen potentially if and when it's sold is that it'll have different landlords and protected tenancy under the, is it the 1952 Tenancy Act one, there or thereabouts. So that, that, that's quite simply where we are, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Madam Mayor, I, could I just query, because my point was that the property is being sold with sitting tenants, which in general, uh, well, generally speaking, lowers the value of a property. So I don't believe my question was properly answered. Thank you. Madam Mayor, I believe it was pretty clear, so I'm happy with the answer I've given. I suggest we continue this in writing. Thank you very much, Ms Wilkins. The next is the second question from Richard Hunnis which is to be answered by the portfolio holder for sustainability, green services and open spaces, if you'd like to come forward. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Aisha Cusper, please. Thank you, there. Um, thank you very much for your question. I'm very pleased to say that we have taken action since your question in October 2021, um, and we have reviewed the ownership records to establish the green space um, that we own, and officers have made several monitoring visits since that over and beyond above what is normal for the council's contracting um, contract monitoring um, and to ensure that our, our land is being maintained. Um, officers continue to work with the housing association that owns the estate Clarion to come up with a solution to for maintenance on their land. Um, we are absolutely clear that when it comes to bulky waste, for example, that is the responsibility of Clarion. And as a, res a responsible social landlord, they should accept that responsibility. Thank you. Do you have a supplementary question? Uh, just very briefly. Firstly, thank you, uh, Councillor Cuthbert, for that response. It's wonderful to hear. And uh, I have seen some improvements um, on that estate. Uh, yes, it is the bulk waste collection, which still um, continues to plague that estate with, uh, obviously, overflowing rubbish bins, bins that aren't big enough, and um, cleaning that uh, needs to take place on top of that because of Professor the... Is there a question? Yeah, there is, there is. Um, do you know how long it will take Clarion to resolve these issues and what it is that they're planning to do? 
Um, I can't answer that today, but if you do write to me, I do actually work in social housing in my day job. I know some of the senior leadership team at Clarion. So if you do write to me personally, I will take that up with the senior leadership team at Clarion for you. I shall do so. Thank you. Thank you. And the last question is from Jew Owens again. If you'd like to come down and take a seat. And it's for the portfolio holder for public protection and safety. Thank you, Councillor Page. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Thank you again, Ms. Owens, for your question. Uh, this fund is only provided to local transport authorities outside of London, so unfortunately Bromley isn't eligible for it. Do you have a supplementary? Yes, I do. I appreciate that you are ineligible for the funding specified, but what um, plans do you have going forwards to both increase active travel in the area of Bromley whilst taking women's safety into consideration? <laughs> Thank you for the supplementary. Active travel wouldn't actually come under my portfolio, but obviously anything that, that uh, it's concerning women's safety, we'll, we will we'll be working cross portfolio on without doubt at all. Um, and as you see, my port fellow portfolio holder is nodding with me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there are also 13 questions for written reply from members of the public. The replies have been circulated and will be included in the minutes. We have received 14 questions from members of the Council for oral reply. If members um, can be to the point, we should be able to deal with all of the questions in the 30 minutes available. But written replies will be sent for any questions that we do not have time for. Question one is from Councillor Sophie Dunbar and will be taken by the Portfolio Holder for Resources, Commissioning and Contract Management, Councillor Christopher Marlowe. Good evening, Councillor Dunbar. Thank you for your question. In terms of access, all committee rooms have adequate access to facilitate disabled access and meetings are supported by attendant staff to assist in any necessary provision. A hearing loop is in place, however, it was recently identified that the existing hearing loop did not accommodate the most recent hearing aid technology. To resolve this, additional portable hearing loops which accommodate the latest technology have been installed to complement the existing loops infrastructure. Councillor Dunbar, do you have a supplementary question? Yes, briefly. Thank you. And these units are going to make a huge difference, not just for me, but for all hearing aid users. So thank you for that. But when I raised the issue nine months ago, and these units are next day delivery, why did it take so long? Thank you, Councillor Dunbar, for your question. Um, I'm not aware of the specific response, um, but I will follow up with officers and send you a written reply. Thank you. Councillor Igo. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, could I just ask the portfolio holder um, how long the disabled toilets are going to be out of action? They've been out of action for a very long time within the building. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Igo. Um, again, I don't have that number at my fingertips, um, but I think problems with not just the disabled toilets, but other toilets um, have been a persistent um, feature in this building for some time, reflecting its age. Um, and I think that is one of the advantages that the council will benefit from when we relocate to the new site. Thank you. Councillor Onslow, wish to speak? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to support uh, Councillor Dunbar's efforts in uh, improving the hearing uh, facilities at the council. Could the portfolio holder confirm that when we move premises that state-of-the-art facilities will be made available at that time? I understand the current facilities in this building are clearly uh, of some age and it doesn't make an awful lot of sense to spend an awful lot of money on them just now, but um, it would be nice to have in sight uh, 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 certainly upgraded effort at that time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Onso. I'm very happy to confirm that we will do so. Thank you. Um, question two is from Councillor Cathy Bance, the portfolio holder for public protection and enforcement. Councillor Angela Page to reply. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Bance, for your question. Um, the Bromley Safer Street Survey was actually a Met Police consultation on their Draft Violence Against Women and Girls Action Plan. So the results have not been made available, but have been incorporated into the final Violence Against Women and Girls Action Plan. 
Councillor Vance, do you have a supplementary? Thank you, I do, but I didn't quite understand the answer. But, I mean, we were told that they would, the results would be circulated through our safer <coughs> neighbourhood um, panels. Um, that's the local one. So Bromley, all the, the Bromley safer neighbourhood panels were supposed to be getting a report that they could share with their residents, and that the national one would be. Um, would be delivered and put online that everybody could see. Well, we haven't received any feedback whatsoever. And this was advertised as an important piece of work around violence against women and girls. And it seems to have just happened and there's no comeback. There's no feedback or outcome. Thank you. So my supplementary is really, um, can we ask the Safer Bromley <coughs> Partnership Board if they can chase up some statistics, particularly that, that that are relevant for Bromley, if we just look after Bromley. Yes, I certainly can do that. As I say, that's come directly from the police originally and has been followed up by officers to check to make sure that that with that actual um, survey, um, the information that was due to come through that safer neighbourhood um, panel mentioned um, in the in the round table was about the street safe service where people put it can sort of put in uh, where their public places where they felt unsafe etc um, uh, when I last checked up on that the the response was that there wasn't a great deal of input into it um, so there wasn't much, much in the way of statistics that they could give us but certainly we will look at it again through the Safer Bromley Partnership Board. Councillor uh, Tony McParlin to the leader, question number three. Um, Councillor Colin Smith to answer, please. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Madam Mayor. And I thank Councillor McParlin for his question. Um, Madam Mayor, the answer is clearly not, as I have uh, commented, on, commented on previously information flow could and should have been better, both to keep those potentially affected better advised and also to help negate unhelpful scaremongering as to the Council's true intentions. Councillor Pardon, do you have a supplementary? Thank you. Yes, I do. Um, at the last full Council meeting, you said that you'd received correspondence from current tenants in support of the community house disposal and a move to the direct line building. So why is it that this Freedom of Information request says, and I quote, the council has not received any correspondence in support of the disposal of Community House? What's inaccurate, this Freedom of Information request or yourself? Um, me on this occasion, uh, I have spoken with even some of the um, leasees think it's a good idea. That's just a simple fact. There are leasees that do think moving to direct line would be a good idea. Um, and I will perhaps through the chair of uh, the BVST, if you will, because I can't divulge private information clearly without the correct permissions, I will happily pass that information on to you. Thank you. Question four is from Councillor Josh King to the portfolio holder for sustainability, green services and open space. Councillor Aisha Cuthbert to reply. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And thank you, Councillor King, for your question. Um, the answer is 17. Um, and just to put that into context, um, that accounts for just 1% of the waste that we collect each year. And I just take an opportunity to remind members that the changes to recycling and our waste services do happen around holiday time, so Christmases. And just to remind all members here, to remind your residents that Easter is coming up and there will be a slight change to our collection services. Thank you. Do you have a supplementary? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, I do. Um, the experience of uh, residents in clock houses, this happens frequently. Uh, can the uh, portfolio holder comment on the resident's belief that the reason that this is happening is because the wagons don't have sufficient capacity? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor King. Um, I've never actually heard of this issue before. Certainly, I don't believe you've 
um, emailed me. Um, I think uh, all members here can attest the fact that they do. If they do email me about any issues in my portfolio, my portfolio, I do get back to them relatively quickly. Um, so I would encourage you, please do um, email me, and I will follow it up. But yeah, very concerned to hear that. Certainly, that's not what the data is telling us. Thank you. Question five is from a councillor. I go to the portfolio holder for sustainability, green spaces. Uh, Green services and open spaces, sorry, um, Councillor Cuthbert. You can just say environment. <laughs> Did I not throw environment in there yeah, as well? Yeah. No, okay. Um, thank you, Councillor Argo, for your question. The AQMA has been expanded in line with the new WHO guidelines, which are very ambitious, as you know. Um, Bromley meets all the national air quality guidelines, including NO2, and our air quality continues um, to improve. Um, in relation to your DEFRA question, um, we actually aren't sure why they haven't updated Bromley's information, um, including the MAC, but, but I have been reassured um, by officers they have sent that information and in time um, before the deadline. So it appears to just be an administrative error and officers will continue to follow up with DEFRA. Thank you. Councillor Iko, do you have a supplementary question? I do. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you for your answer, portfolio holder. Um, since I submitted that question, I've had another look at the website, at DEFRA's website, um, and we seem to have the Air Quality Action Plan uploaded, but it's the March 2010 plan uploaded. So yes, the officers have obviously communicated with them, and they have obviously have put something back onto that, uh, that website, but it's the 2010 plan. Um, it doesn't show the AQMA of 2020, which covers Crystal Palace to Mottingham, down to Cray Valley, and across to Chelsfield and back up to Darwin. Uh, up to West, West Wickham, which is over half the borough. So my question is, why does the air quality management area map and the air quality action plan prepared in 2020 not appear on the DEFRA UK map? And why aren't we speaking to them about it? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Igo. Um, as I said, they are speaking to DEFRA about that. And um, I think they had the 2007 map originally. So we are getting closer, but not there yet, clearly. Um, all I can say that is I've been assured by officers they are following this up, and I'm, I, I don't know what else to say. They're very busy apparently there, but we will continue to push. Well, I'm sorry, that that's, you know, we can't do any more, can we? Um, we will continue to push um, to get the right and relevant information on, on the website. Thank you. Councillor Fulthrop. Thank you for your indulgence, uh, Madam Mayor. Is the portfolio holder aware that uh, when it comes to air quality, the World Health Organization set targets in 2021, and we basically meet 50% of those targets fully, and that on in terms of the other 50%, we are well on our way meeting interim targets two and four for other measures. So we meet the targets for ozone and PM 2.10. I won't bore people with what that is. Thank you, Councillor. Um, um, yeah, no, I was aware of a few of those statistics. However, I would just say we do need to be careful with this debate. And some of those statistics, I think, were taken over um, COVID period. So I do want to be careful in this debate that we don't over, you know, promise on our air quality. It is very good, but it is important that we use facts in this debate. Thank you. Thank you. Question six is from Councillor Kevin Kennedy Brooks to the portfolio holder for children, education and families. Councillor Lima to reply. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Kennedy Brooks, for your question. The teacher assistants and higher level teacher assistants employed by Bromley Council provide a key role in our work to support children across the borough. The council publishes job adverts for schools across the borough and therefore has evidence that the Bromley rate of pay is competitive and often higher than the starting pay from recent academy advertisements. 25% of academies still follow the Bromley Pay Awards. The teacher assistants employed by Bromley will receive the imminent 7.75% pay rise subject to the agreement of full council this evening and also benefit from inclusion in the council's merited reward scheme. The turnover of TAs remains low at less than 15%. Councillor Kennedy Brooks, do you have a supplementary? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. And um, 
Thank you, Portfolio Holder. Matt. Sorry, they, I, I, I'm, I'm doing rhyming slang today. So, uh, um, <clears throat> and I thank the, uh, I, don't, I don't know what rhymes with portfolio, um, so I can't carry that on. I do apologise. Um, so, yeah, Bromley obviously does not have a, a, a local education authority, but as I say, there are still a few, and as you have said, uh, there's a few teaching assistants, especially in the SAN area. Um, and this is extremely important role in sort of protecting um, our children and shaping their future. Um, yes, there is about to be uh, something put before council, which would see a rise. Um, you have said in your answer that there are some that are getting paid, some that are getting paid less, and some that are getting paid more by the council. Um, if in an individual situation, somebody was getting paid seemingly lower, would you, um, would you agree to match fund um, uh, at an average or higher than average pay for those staff. Thank you. Councillor Lana. Uh, thank you, Councillor Kenzie Brooks, for your supplementary question. Um, I think uh, if you send me examples of when that's happened, I can forward that to the Director of Education and he can look into it for you. Thank you. Question seven from Councillor Jeremy Adams to the Portfolio Holder for Resources Commissioning and Contract Management to Councillor Marlow to reply. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I refer um, the councillor to Councillor Tigner in his capacity as Chairman of the Audit Committee. Thank you. So I didn't realise you were standing at that point. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Adams, for the question about external audit fees, something that all of us on the Audit Committee are very concerned about. <clears throat> in relation to the 2019-20, the audit remains incomplete owing to issues concerning asset valuations. The council has therefore not been notified as to the amount of any additional fees. EY, the external auditor, has, start, has stated that a final fee for the period will be determined shortly. Consequently, confirmed final audit fees for subsequent years are not yet available. Do we have a supplementary question? Yes, please. Thanks, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Tickner, for the response. Um, referring to page 31, um, the setting out of the fact that we have five vacancies currently in the Finance Department, two of which have been for more than six months, how confident is the Councillor that we will um, avoid additional, additional fees mm -hmm in the future? Uh, the number of staff in internal audits has nothing to do with the uh, work of the external auditor, uh, but I must say their work seems to be increasing and increasing, Madam Mayor. Um, the uh, accounts are expected to be signed off for 2019-20 uh, by April this year, but uh, the SIPFA, the Chartered Institute of Public Finance and Accountancy, do seem to be issuing more and more guidance. And as far as I can see, uh, the, this guidance is just creating more work for accountants. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not all about headcounts. When it comes to staff, it's also about productivity and outcomes and whether we're getting what we want at the end of the day uh, from the number of staff. Councillor Jim. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, just to follow up to Councillor Tickner there regarding the link between internal staff and external, um, does he recall the letter that we were sent by our external auditors referring to the lack of resource in the finance team and the delays that there had been in responding to their queries? And does he agree that this lack of resource contributed to the additional time taken for them to sign off the uh, accounts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, there has been a turnover of staff, particularly <clears throat> in the section that deals with the external auditors. But as I was trying to explain, the external auditors are asking more and more questions, more and more detail, for instance, wanting a valuation of all the roads that the borough owns. Uh, based on how often they need to be repaired and uh, 
it seems to me that uh, a lot of these questions, does it matter? Is the worth, is, are the road assets worth nothing? Um, or are they worth what it's going to cost to renew them? And uh, is it worth the staff spending all this time uh, making a valuation on our public roads which wear out at different rates? So all these issues will be discussed at the next audit committee and uh, I invite any members interested to come along and hear more detail. Councillor Marlowe. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just very briefly, um, I feel obliged to remind Councillor Geel that in a similar question that was asked some months ago on the number of finance staff supporting audit, the answer I gave then is that the number of staff supporting it has doubled um, within the last five years, I believe. The Director of Finance will correct me if necessary. Um, but I think before considering any further increase in staffing on this topic, um, we need to look at things like productivity, and the regulatory environment we find ourselves in that Councillor Tickner has referred to, rather than the default reaction being to just hire more staff, albeit we're aware that many other local authorities, particularly in inner London, follow that policy. Councillor Owen. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Given that valuing buildings and things is a matter of opinion, and we only know their true value when they're sold, does the Chairman of the Audit Committee think that um, EY are just making works for themselves, to, which comes to different valuations from the previous auditor. And if there's a disagreement and PricewaterhouseCooper were wrong and Ernst Young are right, should any additional fees not be billed to the previous auditor? Councillor Tickner. Well, I know <clears throat> uh, EY are speaking to the previous external auditor, and I do hope they are sharing information and saving costs to Bromley taxpayers. Uh, this is what we're pressing for. And uh, to a certain extent, our hands are tied because the external auditors are appointed for us through the scheme that we are in. And uh, we have to uh, accept what they say. But the amount of work is driven by SIPFA, who are uh, thinking up all sorts of guidance, new guidance, more and more every year. Thank you. Um, question eight. Councillor uh, Chris Price to the portfolio holder for resources, commissioning and contracts. Councillor Marlowe to reply. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I do think you rather indulge Councillor Price with his six questions as one, um, but I have answers for all of them. Um, and they are uh, part A, 1,949. In addition, 9,200 school children have received four lots of £15 food vouchers for the school holidays in the period October 22 to February 23. B, 743. C, 124. D, 700,600 pounds. And E, 893,800 pounds. F, we expect to spend all funds. Thank you, Councillor Marlowe. Councillor Price, do you have a supplementary? Not on all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make it a general one. Um, thank you for the answer and thank you for those numbers. I'm not a quick writer, so hopefully I've got most of them down on there. Um, these numbers are very low for the number of people who have been coming through and the money that is still outstanding is higher than the money that, that we have spent. We only have till the end of this coming months to spend that as well. And our promotion on this has been irregular, to say the least. The how to apply button on the website keeps coming on and going off. Councillor Igo has been amazing at trying to make sure we get that back onto there. Or is that a question? It, it is eventually. Okay. Um, and, you know, it is still off over this weekend. What I want to know, this is money that the Conservative government has actually given Bromley to give to people who are disadvantaged, which is amazing that it's there. I'm really concerned that we're going to be handing money back. How are you going to assure me that we are going to make sure that all of this money is spent and goes to people in need? Thank you, Councillor Price. Um, I think you would find it helpful um, to know also that applications not awarded as yet consist of 478 new cases under investigation and within the 15 working day time limit. 
552 applications await further information or clarification from the applicant to enable it to be determined, and there are 52 duplicate applications. The scheme has been publicised through the Bromley website, on social media, through our partner organisations and by internal teams. We continue to raise awareness of the scheme. Um, thank you, Councillor Price, for raising the issue with the website. I will follow that up with Mr Bridgewater. Thank you. Councillor Igo. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, will the portfolio holder just tell me whether he's been involved with the communications plan for the Household Support Fund? Um, as Councillor Price has uh, noted, I've been fairly uh, loud on emailing when I've noticed the links aren't working. But I'd really like to know if the portfolio holder was involved in the communications plan. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Igo. Um, I'm happy to confirm that I have discussed it with officers, but we've generally followed a similar approach for all of these um, awards which have been introduced since um, the start of the pandemic. Thank you. Councillor Geel, we're on question number nine. To the portfolio holder for sustainability, green services and open spaces. Um, thank you so much, Councillor Jill, for your question. Um, between January 2021 and January 2023, there have been 40 reports of dump rub dumped rubbish on Newlands Park Road by Penge East Station, and of the 41, 40 were reported via Fix My Street. Councillor Jill, do you have a supplementary? Uh, yes, I do, Madam Mayor. Thank you. And thank you to the portfolio holder for that response. Given the continued and consistent reporting of the fly tipping over the past two years, can the portfolio holder tell me how many fines have been issued or how many prosecutions have been begun uh, in relation to the fly tipping that's been happening at that location over the past two years? Um, I can confirm, unfortunately, none. Um, and I was the was the first time I actually had know, known about this issue um, when you asked this question. So thank you very much for this question. Um, I have asked officers to follow up. Um, I think it was they their sense is it's the nature of the rubbish, um, and it's quite hard or difficult to find out where this has actually come from. That being said, um, officers have agreed that they will look at this area and see what more we can do to track down you know the the criminals uh for doing this and but i do want to not give away too much information as you can probably um understand why in public we want to keep that as secret as possible thank you thank you <clears throat> question 10 the second question from councillor kathy bounce the portfolio holder for public protection and enforcement Councillor Page, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, and thank you again, Councillor Bance. Yes, um, that this will be built into the annual crime needs assessment and review of crime performance within the borough, which is reported to the Safer Bromley Partnership and then uh, scrutinised by the Public Protection and Enforcement PDS. Councillor Bance. Thank you. Yes, was that the Metropolitan Gang Task? Force. Okay, because I, I would just say that we do need to hear regularly because going back now, probably six years, you know, we had five murders in Penge, three are still unsolved. And if you look at the statistics now, these um, incidents of knife crime, stabbings, have spread from Penge in, into the rest of Bromley, which I warned at the time if we didn't do something about tackling them where well, we knew where they are. So I just ask, can we keep these reports coming in? Because we shouldn't have a gang task group that never reports back. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, there is, on the on the um, quarterly, there are reports on it, but I have looked into them and they're not detailed. So that can be one of the things that we can really push for. Thank you. Councillor Fulthrop. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Can uh, the portfolio holder remind me who it is overall that's responsible for policing in Greater London? Thank you, Councillor Fulstock. <laughs> right, question 12. Councillor Josh King to the portfolio holder for sustainability, green spaces and open... Uh, oh, I haven't got 11 on here. It's the same one. Please. Apologies, I don't have an 11. Can we do number 12 first and then do number... No, OK, we've got number 11. Right, from Councillor Tony McParlin to the portfolio holder for renewal, recreation and housing. 
It's half up, I'll stay on now. <laughs> Thank you very much for your question, Councillor McPartland. It's a very short answer. The answer is yes. There is already, um, this is already being undertaken by Pinnacle and also by mayors from War Homes Bromley to identify any issues and an action plan is put in place to resolve them as soon as identified. Do you have a supplementary? I do yes. apologise. No, no problem. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you very much for your question. That provides me with a lot of reassurance. Um, my follow-up is, it something that we can get reported to at RRH committee so we can regularly monitor the progress with this? Thank you. I see no reason why not. I mean, we review, review these reports via the operational board meetings that we have with Pinnacle and Mears. So if there are some trends coming out of that, there's no reason why that couldn't be reported to PDS. Thank you. Question 12. Uh, Councillor Josh King to the Portfolio Holder for Sustainability, Green Services and Open Spaces. Um, thank you, Councillor King, for your question. The Council has collected over 2,000 tonnes of leafing this season and continues to collect from hard-to-reach um, areas where there's carved pars or where further leaf fall has accumulated. Um, likewise, our street cleansing team deals with over 1,500 um, inquiries per month, as well as attending to scheduled works to ensure that litter is removed from the public highway. Um, and I do want to put on record today um, my thanks and volunteers in volunteers in Clock House. Our uh, friends groups are key stakeholders in helping us keep Bromley beautiful. Um, and I would encourage all residents to get involved in friends groups, whether that's tree friends, street friends, or park friends. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have a supplementary? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, I do. Um, will you investigate scheduled cleaning of, of gutters and gullies, including requesting access and the moving of parked cars? And does the portfolio understand um, that without this, residents won't think that they're getting value for money? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor King. Um, all streets across Bromley are monitored, but if there is a specific issue, please do email me or um, report it to a senior environment officer. Thank you. Thank you. Question 13 is from Councillor Chris Price to the Portfolio Holder for Sustainability, Green Services and Open Spaces. Thank you, Councillor Price, for your question. Um, the antisocial behaviour at Hobblingwell is very sad. I know that, you've, um, that you know, you're aware that I've met with the Friends Group a number of times. Um, and I know that the community and Friends Group are super dedicated to the park. And I want to do what I can as a portfolio holder to keep the environment as it is and to stop motorbikes from entering the field. But we must take this um, to be a joint partnership between the council and the police. This is really crucial. Um, I have asked officers to look at options that are cost effective while not spoiling the natural beauty of the park. Um, options continue to be explored, but funding and fiscal prudence must be a consideration when exploring new um, infrastructure projects. Councillor Price, do you have a supplementary? Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Portfolio Holder, for that. A quick, simple follow up. Is that a yes, we're going to get a perimeter fence around the park? That is, I don't know yet. We are looking at options, um, but I've got to weigh up the uh, ability to, or the the issue of protecting the park from motorbikes with the, you know, um, the issue that we're having right now with, you know, the council finances. That must be a consideration for all of us here and the taxpayers of Bromley. Councillor Chiu. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just to follow up to the portfolio holder, um, I believe around £500,000 was found for fixing a bridge in Kelsey Park from the Healthy Bromley Fund. Does the portfolio holder consider that this fund might be somewhere where the funds to provide fencing for Hobbling Well could also be found from? Thank you, Councillor Jill, for your question. As I mentioned in my response, this is a new infrastructure project. That is a old um, a bridge 50 plus years old so that is the difference every single time this council makes a decision to put new infrastructure projects and in, we have to think about the maintenance and maintaining that new infrastructure these are decisions that do require additional thinking and ensuring that this is the best best use of taxpayer money thank you councillor Iger. thank you madam mayor i'll keep it short but we got all that money for Hobbling Well. I mean, it was it's an amazing facility there for, for, the, for the community for children, for the, the cycling. 
uh, it seems ridiculous not to put a safe fence around it, considering the bollards get knocked down regularly. That wasn't a question. <laughs> you got there before I did, Councillor. Can I? Sorry, just can I point out that it's it is a different field to the bike tracks on the upper field, and what we're talking about right now is the lower field. I think we need to go to question fourteen. Uh -huh. Question 14 is our final question, and it's from uh, Councillor Simon Gill, the portfolio holder for Renewal, Recreation and Housing. Thank you for your question, Councillor Gill. Um, unfortunately, the Council does not hold historic specific repair costs relating to the theatre, as the maintenance was previously formed part of the overall block contract with Amy. The Churchill Theatre, as has previously been reported, is contained within the Operational Property Review, Work is underway to complete a full feasibility and options appraisal and a report will be provided to members in due course. I can't stress enough that this work is being undertaken in full liaison with the theatre itself. Councillor Gill, do you have a supplementary? Thank you, Madam Mayor, I do. Um, thank you to the portfolio holder for her comment. I note that actually the costs of maintaining the church alarm are not quite covered in the operational property review uh, and a, there's reference to a future report could she assure me that the council will do everything in its power to ensure the continued viability um, and operation of the theater of which i'm sure many of us including madame mayor herself will agree is the jewel of the crown in bromley's arts and cultural scene we are working with the theater to try and work out a sustainable future for it councillor weber Madam Mayor, um, just to, to echo um, the earlier discussion and to follow on, Councillor Ireland and I have also met with the team at Trafalgar. We welcome the ongoing uh, discussions that they're having with the council. Um, we've obviously got specific concerns about how, how run down the, the building has become, uh, both internal with regard to plumbing and, and wastewater and indeed mosaic piling issues on the outside. So we would welcome those uh, discussions and, and the, the theatre being fully refurbished. And if we could be kept involved as appropriate, that would be welcome. Thank you. That was nearly a question. <laughs> Excellent. Just made it. Um, with two minutes to go. Super. Right. So, um, four questions have been received from members requesting a written answer. The question and answer have been circulated and will be published in the minutes. Statements. We've received one request for a statement. The statements should be no more than five minutes and can be followed by questions, not speeches, please. We are here all night, in other words. The statement is requested by Councillor uh, Igo and Simon, uh, Councillor Simon Gill from the portfolio holder for Children, Education and Families on the announcement of the Mayor of London to fund free school meals for all primary school children in 2023-24. Councillor Kate Limer, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillors Igo and Jill, for their request for a statement. In the request for a statement, Councillors opposite state that the Mayor is funding free meals. The Mayor, in fact, is not funding them. Hard-working Londoners and businesses are. The answer for Labour politicians is always to keep giving away free stuff, which is not, in fact, free. The answer should be to not take as much money from people in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Sadiq Khan will be raising his precept by 9.74% this coming year. That's an extra 58 million he will be taking from all Londoners. When Boris was mayor, he didn't raise his precept once in eight years. In, uh, in real terms, Boris gave Londoners a tax cut. Sadiq Khan's precept will have risen by an eye-watering 57% since he was elected. If he wants to help people with the cost of living, he should stop taxing them to the hilt. He says he wants to encourage people onto public transport. Strange then that he thinks the way to do that is by raising fares by 6% this next year in order to compensate for his own financial mismanagement of TfL and despite the government bailing him out to the tune of over £6 billion. 
If he wants to help people with the cost of living, he could stop putting up transport costs, especially as in his last manifesto, he said he would freeze them. If he wants to help people with the cost of living, he would not be ignoring consultations and pushing on with a pointless ULES expansion scheme, yeah. which punishes the poorest people in and around London for having the audacity to own a car in a semi-rural area, damaging and bankrupting businesses along the way. So although this money will come from an unexpected business rate income, this money is still part of the Lo Mayor of London's gigantic tax collection pot. If he didn't want to pass it on to Londoners as a reduction of his precept, this money could have been spent on other things which are actually part of his remit, such as tackling serious youth violence. Or if not, at the very least, he could have had a more targeted approach to who receives a free school meal. We now find ourselves in a situation where the least well-off Londoners are not just paying for the lunches of the children of middle classes, but also the least well-off are now paying for the lunches of children of millionaires. The councillors opposite in the request for a statement described the announcement as excellent. I personally don't see how that can be described as an excellent outcome in any way whatsoever. This has the potential to result in everyone whether they are lower income households with no children, those saving up before they can afford to start a family or get on the housing ladder, those with preschool children, those with secondary school children, those with university children, single person households and pensioners struggling to make ends meet, all paying for the lunches for all primary school pupils and for families much wealthier than themselves. That's excellent, is it? That's progressive. Councillor Igo and Councillor Geel, who asked for the statement, appear to think it is right that the residents of their wards, such as those living in the Downham Estate in Plaistow, or for example, the Royston Estate in Penge, pay for the lunches of the children living in the Bickley Park Estate in my ward. We, on this side of the chamber, do not think that is right, and we are flabbergasted that you appear to be celebrating it. Another important issue that is a result of this announcement, that this policy is a total nightmare for schools to administer and finance. Many schools won't have the kitchen and dining facilities that can cope with loads more extra pupils taking more meals at the same time. The mayor was asked last week at the London Assembly if he would be providing funding for the schools that needed added infrastructure and equipment. The mayor evaded the question, so we take that as a no, he is not. This means that schools on already tight budgets would have to fork out for themselves or juggle around the timetable to do multiple dining sessions, which would disrupt the school day. Next, let us take a look at the timing of both his announcement and the scheme's implementation. Firstly, he is starting the scheme in September for one year only. He's been very clear on this point that it's for one year only. Well, if he's so worried about children in primary school, why doesn't he start it now? Or at least after the upcoming Easter holidays? They need the meals right now, don't they? But no, he's waiting to start it in September. Because if he starts it now, or after the upcoming Easter holidays, the scheme would finish just before his mayoral election. And that would be helpful to his campaign, would it? Secondly, why has he announced it now? Because he's feeling the heat about his disastrous ULES expansion scheme, which punishes the poorest in London. Yes. And he is trying to divert attention away by buying votes ahead of next year's election. In summary, Madam Mayor, this is ill thought out, politically motivated, gesture politics by a mayor desperate to deflect attention from the bad, bad press he is getting about you, Liz. He is trying to buy people's votes with freebies. However, the problem is that whilst he will be giving with one hand, he will be taking much, much more away with the other. But the real moral of this story is there is no, there is no such thing 
as a free lunch. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Omega. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Well, I'm a little bit shocked, actually. I mean, that's quite a battering we've taken there. And you've decided not really to talk about children being hungry, but you've decided to talk about every other subject under the sun. And I have to say, if we're going to mention Boris Johnson, could we mention the millions wasted on the Garden question. Bridge and various question, other... Uh, projects he had. I mean, that would have fed a lot of It needs to be a question, Councillor Igo. Sorry, Mayor. Sorry, Madam Mayor. I do apologise. Um, I asked for the statement because I wanted to see whether the council, and this is a question, would reverse Peter, Councillor Peter Fortunes, the portfolio holders last year, in October 2020, when you decided not to provide food support to Bromley children during the school holidays. And basically, that's still my question. If the the Mayor of London is providing free school meals for children for that year. Will you please provide free school meals for those children who are eligible for free school meals during that year? Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Councillor Igo, for your supplementary. I thought you'd be able to guess from what I said that the answer to that would be no. But at the last meeting in 2020, when Peter Fortune answered a similar question, he stood here and read out three A4 sheets of a uh, list of support that we give to our young people, both uh, in term time and holiday term time. Um, and he read out every single one. It took a very long time, so I thought I won't do that tonight, but I'll be very happy to forward that on to you to have a look at. Um, you know, as well as I know, that we have a lot of um, actions during the school holidays. You've asked questions before about the HAF and the supermarket vouchers. Just to update the Chamber, that since uh, the winter of 2020, we have continued to support and feed 9,200 children in this borough during the holiday period. Councillor Chris Bryce. I'm, I'm quite stunned by your response there. You work with um, education leaders, with head teachers. I would love you to Do give me a response. Point for, point for. I would ask you, will you be reading that same statement to the head teachers when you meet with them who are, have got staff who are feeding their children because they are not able to afford breakfast and they are not entitled to free school meals? Uh, this statement was about Sadiq Khan. And Sadiq Khan, if he wants to help lower health, <laughs> if he wants to help lower income households, He'd stop raising their taxes, stop hiking up fares, and stop the units. It's as simple as that. My answer is a matter of public record and will be available for anybody who would like to see it. That's what you Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so, as quite rightly pointed out, this, this is. Uh, this is for questions rather than statements. So a couple of questions. You refer to this policy as a freebie to buy votes. How would you describe the government's handouts uh, for give out to help out a £150 council tax rebate and the energy bill uh, provision? Are those also given yeah, to point buy of votes? order, that is not on the subject of the statement. <laughs> uh, it was literally wording the portfolio holder said in the statement, so I can't really say how it was on the... The subject of the statement and the response are two totally different things. Um, I would also ask, given your response and apparent objection to free school meals, is the Conservative Party's position now that free school meals should be taken away from families in need? Um, and I would also ask, given this, you've referred to the impact of tax hikes. Have one question, I, oh, I apologise, Madam Mayor. I believe I'm asked, allowed to ask more than one question. Um, if I could also ask, you referred to tax hikes and taking away money from the poorest. On this basis, will the council be reversing their cut to council tax, uh, the council tax support scheme that will hike council tax on the poorest thousands of households? Madam Mayor, point of order: This is not on the subject of school meals. 
Madam Mayor, the portfolio holder was asked for a statement and she made a statement encompassing free school meals. Councillor Tickner. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, is it correct or is it not that children in real need are already entitled to taxpayer funded school meals? Uh, yes, thank you, Councillor Tickner. In the, Sadiq Khan's own press statement, he stated that 30% of children in primary school in the key stage uh, two area already get free school meals, so the most vulnerable are provided for. But if the mayor had wanted to do a targeted approach, there'd be an argument for that. He could have worked with the DWP, he could have asked for referrals from head teachers, he could have uh, expanded it to families and universal credit, but he didn't. He gave it to everyone, including the poorest in our society, now paying for the lunches of you know, middle class people and up to millionaires and billionaires in the richest city in the, in the country. Councillor Fullthrop. You defer to Councillor Gabbett. Okay, Councillor Gabbett. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Is the portfolio holder aware that some educational charities are concerned that as a result of these measures, the school, many schools might be missing out on the very important pupil premium payments, which are safeguarded, which, which are only spent on those who need the money, because it will be more difficult to identify which pupils fall under that category. Having been the school governor, we know and we have seen how difficult it is to incentivize parents to fill in the form if children are already getting universal free school meals and the percentage of um, parents who apply does go up after year two when they have to fill in the form to do it. So schools might be missing out on vital funding as a result of this and children who need this most will be disadvantaged because pupil premium is only spent on the most disadvantaged children and it is a very important and uh, is, uh, so my question is are you aware that educational charities are raising this before the holder? Thank you. Uh, yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, don't bang the microphone. Yep, I know. So, item six is to consider the 2023-24 council tax report in accordance with our usual practice. An extension of time will be granted to one representative of each group after the motion has been moved and seconded. I would invite the leaders of the opposition groups or their nominees to speak. If at this point an amendment is moved and seconded, then it will be debated. May I remind you that the mover of the amendment does not have the right to reply. I believe Councillor Bennett wishes to speak. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Point of, two points of order. First of all, my apologies. You were very quick on declarations of interest. I'm a member of the Lee Valley Region Park Authority which precepts this council. I may say I was the only member to vote against the increase in the precept. Uh, but secondly, and with the agreement, I hope, of all parties in the council, it would be very useful if we could, in advance of the changes in the constitution, which are coming to the next meeting, have one debate on, on the budget and all the amendments, and then take the votes on each amendment at the end, rather than repeating ourselves, and similarly on the motions at the end of the meeting. Thank you, Councillor Dennis. Um, is that seconded? Mayor, happy to second. Thank you. I will also remind members that we must take a recorded vote. On the, on the amendment. On this amendment. Yeah. Madam Mayor, if I may speak on Councillor Bennett's, uh, we were happy to accept the uh, proposal with regards to the budget amendments. Uh, Councillor Bennett didn't mention anything to do with the motions and the votes on, on the motions at the end of the agenda, which would be, I would have thought, separate on the basis that they are separate motions. Sorry, I don't think Councillor Jill understands. Each debate on each motion, any amendments on that would all be taken at once. Obviously, two separate debates and two separate motions, which are completely different. Apologies. On that basis, the amendments being taken at the same time. Yes, we agree that makes sense. Yeah. Can I tell you that that's agreed that we're going to vote 
after yes yeah, agree. agreed agreed no objections no okay so uh councillor christopher marlow would you like to make your recommendations thank you madam mayor setting the annual budget and the level of council tax is one of the most important actions this council takes every year we all as members have a legal duty to set a balanced budget to ensure that council services can be provided as planned. This budget setting session has been perhaps the most challenging for over a decade due to the spike in inflation to the highest level in 40 years. This has affected every aspect of the council's finances, but to take one example, the increase in energy costs that has affected everybody in this room has also affected the council with the initial estimate of our energy bill doubling this year. While cost increases for many of our services have reached double digits, the council's income has not increased by anything to the same extent. It is true that our limited grant funding from central government has increased, and it is a credit to the long-term financial management of this administration that our income from treasury management has increased materially this year. However, these alone are insufficient and therefore we are proposing a 2.99% increase in core council tax with a 2% increase in the adult social care precept. While an increase of this size makes all of us on this side of the chamber uncomfortable for all of the reasons given by Councillor Lima in her spirited defence of traditional conservative views on tax, it is necessary to ensure the long-term financial health of the borough that we make these increases. Even with them, the Council is planning to utilise a proportion of its reserves this year and in the remainder of the forecast period. This is the right thing to do in view of short-term cost pressures and the significant one-off expenditures related to the capital programme, but it is something we must all monitor and consider in future. Finally, Madam Mayor, I would like to thank all officers involved in the preparation of the budget for their hard work, especially around planned mitigations to cost increases. I hereby move the recommendations set out on pages 49 to 52, and I urge for members to vote for them unamended. I'll ask you to second it, please. Madam Mayor, I'm very happy to second this, and I reserve my right to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have an amendment from the Labour Party? Uh, yes, we do, Madam Mayor. Point of order, Madam Mayor. Um, this is very helpful. The Labour Party are handing around their amendment. I believe there may be one from the Liberal Democrat group as well. Would it be helpful to the Council if that was also circulated at this time, rather than going through this procedure in 10 minutes' time? And it gives us a chance to study in detail what's being requested. Uh, Madam Mayor, I would object to that on the basis I can't really read the next party's amendment whilst I'm speaking on ours. No. <laughs> we also haven't got copies of the Labour amendment here because they've run out of copies. Madam Mayor, um, I just want to point out in advance that we're not moving any amendments. 
to the that's, budget. That's handy, thank yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, just, just, just for future reference, I have actually mentioned this at previous meetings. If you, it's on. Sorry, I'm just too tall. Um, uh, if if opposition, the other opposition parties want us to give give due consideration to what they're moving, would it not be an idea to actually move a uh, candidate out in advance? Rather than this secretive, you haven't. We, we, we haven't got a copy. We haven't got a copy. Well, we, haven't, we haven't had a copy of it, Madam Mayor, and it would be useful if we could have it in advance so we consider it before the debate. And the same with Liberal Democrat amendments as well. Right, can I, can I just also remind people not to put their papers, I know we've only just handed out papers, but please don't put the papers on top of the microphones, they're really difficult for people with hearing aids and the loop. So, I now believe we have to um, ask Councillor Geel to propose the amendment and we have to have it seconded. I need to get this in the right order. It's getting confusing this evening. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I rise to propose the Labour Group's amendment to the budget this evening. Um, and I'd first just like to thank uh, Pete Turner and the other officers who have been so helpful and given us their time in helping us prepare for this amendment this evening. I believe they haven't got any. You haven't got any. Oh, has he got his... Sort of, sorry, Madam Mayor, tablet is in front of the microphone. We can't hear this end. Thank no you. problem. I will. There we are. Is that any better? Yes. Excellent. Um, I'd also like to reflect, Madam Mayor, on the difference of the budget one year ago compared to this year's motion. We have, of course, last year's fake freeze of a 1% a rise, cast off as a 0% rise. This year we have a 4.99% council tax rise. We had no plans for borrowing last year. This year, 50 million of borrowing. This year we also have a £164 million pound repair bill which has materialised in an operational property review despite four years uh, in the planning. No, no apparent warning of that coming last year. Uh, we had, we've moved from a Prime Minister that was being issued with one fixed penalty fine to a Prime Minister who's been issued with two fixed penalty fines. Uh, we've gone from a council which is talking about its long-term financial stability and its award-winning financial performance to one which the council leader referred to at the previous meeting as being four to five years away from being bankrupt. Um, and, of course, we've moved to having fewer si seats on the other side of the chamber and more seats on this side of the chamber, which uh, I think some of us are, are very happy about. Uh, some of us, I suspect, less so. Councillor Smith, in the annual meeting after this time last year, at the council's first annual meeting of the term, referred to a number of priorities on road safety, affordable housing, on mental health and on meeting the net zero targets. We don't disagree with these long-term priorities, but sadly, one year on, we're seeing very little action on them in tonight's budget. And perhaps surprisingly for an opposition leader, I have to express some sympathy for the Conservative group this year and to agree with some of what Councillor Marlowe said. The war in Ukraine, the high inflation, um, the ongoing cost of living crisis are difficulties which, to some extent, the Council could not have predicted a year ago and which have been incredibly challenging for this Council's financial position, as indeed it has been for many of Bromley's residents. And of course, the Conservative group cannot be completely blamed for having a Prime Minister who crashed the UK economy. Um, they cannot be blamed entirely for having a weak Prime Minister who is now hobbled by his right wing no plan, a zombie government which is crawling towards and clinging towards the next general election. That isn't entirely the Conservative Party's fault locally in Bromley. But there are some mistakes that, unfortunately, Madam Mayor, we do have to hold them accountable for. Losing 30 million on investment properties uh, over the past few years, including the retail sector, uh, which they appear to have not realised uh, was, was struggling a long time before they started stopped investing. And before the Conservative group say that those investments were for income, we note this budget includes a loss of £150,000 in income and, of course, the loss of reserves that we're having to put into our capital budget. Because, of course, they've also failed to properly maintain buildings and assets that this council owns and uses for community purposes. Public assets, 
that are now subject to £164 million in repairs. The council and this administration failed to fix the roof before it's raining, and now the number of leaks is letting water pour through. Councillor Smith called it sweating the assets. We call it being a negligent landlord. But at least the council has recognised the benefits of insourcing after the calamity of the asset misvaluations by our previous contractors. But why weren't those contractors held to account? And where in the increase to the capital budget and the increase in the 65 million worth of property sales is the remaining 40 billion black hole, which the council either doesn't seem to have a plan to fill or just isn't telling residents what it is. During a cost of living crisis, when residents have seen massive rises in their energy bills and rent uh, and food bills, the council has also been pushing rent increases for its tenants of 7%, a council tax bill of 5%, and as mentioned earlier, has cut council tax support, affecting thousands of hardworking families in this, in, in this borough who will face an increase even above the 5% increase that the rest of our residents will come this April. Many of these families already struggling to get by. And the short-term view here expressed tonight, in order to get through this te temporary period of, of difficulty until we finally get what we know this country needs, a Labour government, this council is selling off public assets. And yes, this gives them capital receipts as a one-off. But what it loses is the ongoing income revenue, which we know is important to fund our services. And so not only have we lost this, but we've lost the potential for growth. If this council had invested uh, the money that it had sitting in reserves in a better way than getting very low interest rates. For example, the six million of funds that were allocated in 2014 to support the Cray Valley Business Corridor on Biggin Hill, which have sat in a bank account and have not even been identified for projects in almost a decade, let alone spent. Imagine how much more that could have done for our community had it been invested and supported local businesses and community groups in the areas rather than just sat in the council's bank account. And the port barrel politics here is unfortunate uh, and just really quite shocking in some ways. £500,000, as I mentioned earlier, from the Healthy Bromley Fund to fix a bridge in Kelsey Park. Now, I, I'm not quite sure how Healthy Bromley and bridges fit together, but I'm sure that there's a logic there. And now we see £2 million for Kelsey Park dredging of the lake going into the budget with no scrutiny, with not even a report to the Environment Committee, um, and coincidentally, it being focused in a ward which the Conservatives are worried about losing in the next general election. Now, the Labour group have an alternative to this managed decline budget, which only focuses on the survival of this council and not of the longer term needs of its residents. And actually, we recognise that there are significant revenue pressures in this budget. And so actually, the financial envelope that we're focusing on really doesn't increase very much this year. Well, we focused on a different approach to the capital strategy in order to preserve more of our community assets and the income from them, and using that additional rental income to fund certain priorities. Um, we are also using 1.2 million of miscellaneous reserves, which even the finance director can't identify what they've been earmarked for, um, to support the cost of living crisis and the local charities who are providing such important support to our residents as a one-off transitional period, as we hopefully finally see the end of this crisis in the years to come. One decision we disagreed on, as you please know, is this council's decision to rush and buy the direct line building, when we don't know how much space we really need, how many employees are going to be working in it, or who else is going into it. And as we've heard this evening, some of the people this, this council thinks will be occupying the building <laughs> have expressed they don't want to be in there. We would propose instead pursuing a, this, this purchase as a joint venture with a partner retaining 51%, but sharing the costs and the space with a valued partner, perhaps our local NHS or other potential bidders, reducing our committed capital by almost 15 million pounds, which we can instead use to retain partial ownership of some of our most important community assets that you have provided, uh, proposed to sell. Councillor Adams will be speaking on this further um, and talking about how we would use this funding to essentially protect some of our important public buildings rather than selling them off uh, for the future. We would also use the providing capital for the uh, delivering other key priorities, 
So developing investment into the Cravira corridor that was promised almost a decade ago through funding for Hobbling Well Recreation Ground. Another difference is that we believe support should be directed for those who need it most and that we should work in partnership with our businesses, our charity sector and our communities and not behave in this controlling, combative manner, forcing them to compete for our dwindling pot of support. Which is why our focus is also on increasing the pay for our lowest paid staff, those who are struggling to get by with rising food bills, by guaranteeing them the London living wage as a minimum level of pay and also allocating more funding for staff on the lowest incomes. We would cancel your 7% rent increase for council tenants, and Council McGregor will talk about this further. She'll also outline our proposal to convert empty retail units, which you will put into your, our investment fund, even though, as we learnt this year, they were not bought for investment purposes, to provide much needed accommodation for families currently living in temporary accommodation, in many cases, miles and miles and hours outside of this borough, to support local families who are in need. And as we know, as I've already said, the cost of living crisis and the work that our local charities who have stepped up where the council and the state has fallen back due to 13 years of austerity is, is vital. They are facing a crisis of increased demand and increased cost. So councillors Price will detail how we'll provide core funding of a million pounds to councils to continue on this crisis for the next three years, but also how this council under our budget would provide support and leadership to end food insecurity in Bromley over this council term. We'll also use additional capital to fund safer streets and, as Councillor um, Page talked about earlier, initiatives to ensure that women and uh, other, other residents feel safe in our local streets and in our local parks. We'd use three million pounds to renew our parks and provide investment to all parks across Bromley, not just those that the Conservative councillors care about. And Councillor Igo will be talking about this in more detail, including the additional support and investment we would put into Kelsey Park. We'll also offer air pollution monitor funding to ensure that when we talk about our air pollution policy, we, can't, we can rely on some statistics rather than just the one full-time air monitor that we have in the borough. We'll also provide funding for schools that want to maintain school streets and a community bulk waste collection, which will, will, we believe will help tackle the problem of fly tipping residents are seeing across our borough. I also want to take a moment to talk about our role as corporate parents. And as you'll know, every year we propose exempting care leavers from council tax. Uh, and every year you reject that. Madam Mayor, we were at the Celebration of Achievement Award uh, just a couple of weeks, in fact, last week, I believe. And the importance of the support that we give to our to young children is so vital. So in addition um, to that proposal to provide that additional financial independence as, as care leavers leave care and, and the continued support from the council, we'll also be guaranteeing to continue funding the wor uh, workshop grants for the Church of Theatre to provide creative workshops to our looked after young people. This is funding that's due to run out next year. And we believe that this £40,000 a year opens opportunities and, as we heard, does incredible things for those young people. So we would vote to continue that funding. Lastly, we'd, uh, we'd allocate funding to review the council's options around care homes, giving the rising cost of residential care we know is going to hit us in future years, especially if the government social care reforms eventually come into effect. We'll consider, as part of this review, how we can partner with our ICB and local NHS partners with a view to securing better options for providing care without having to line the pockets of some of the country's richest health, health uh, hedge funds. And we'll also, as a last small token to celebrate this borough, we'll create the Bromley Community Celebration Fund with pump prime funding of just £5,000 a year from this council, but with encouragement for councillors, businesses and residents to, to contribute. This fund would support community groups running events across our borough to support the local area and the diverse communities within it. Perhaps it could be marking LGBT History Month in February, as this council has yet again not done. It could be marking Pride Month in June, Black History Month. It could be marking Chinese New Year or Hanukkah or place-based celebrations like perhaps St Paul's Grey Christmas Fair or Plasto Pride. Providing resources for residents and bringing them together to support our community and show that we in Bromley value the diversity of our communities. So 
Thank you for listening to our budget amendment proposals. We know, as every year, that the Conservative group will be voting against them. We, we appreciate that. This is politics. It's the punch and duty of full council budget setting. But we hope that we will see some of these ideas make their way into your budget in future years. Um, and we hope that members across all of the chamber will consider that this is not necessarily just a time to do the bare minimum that this council can, and that we cannot be balancing our budget on the backs of the poorest residents who cannot afford some of the increases and hikes this council is providing on them this year. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? I second. Thank you. Madam Mayor. Uh, first, I'd like to reiterate the thanks to uh, Pete Turner and the council officers who have been uh, tirelessly helping us. And I'd also um, like to record thanks to Councillor Marlow for the no doubt many hours of work that he will have put in uh, to this budget. And I'd also like to note that in many ways, this budget has avoided uh, potential aggressive cost cuts. I'd like to place it on the record that we, we have noted that. Um, however, it has also missed potential opportunities, and that's what I'd like to talk about. Some highlighted by Councillor Geel just now, uh, but notably the opportunity to protect and preserve our public assets. So the operational property review sadly dominates this budget this year. And it tells a story of systemic and sustained neglect of Bromley's key assets over many years. Neglect of the Churchill Theatre, neglect of Beckenham Halls, Community House. The list is long, but it culminates here in the Civic Centre. The money was there, but successive Conservative administrations chose to squirrel money needed for maintenance into reserves. Now, the decisions at the time might not have been framed that way. But this is the reality of the trade-off that existed. Tens of millions of Bromley's taxpayers' monies lent to, lent to councils from Thurrock to Northumberland, who were investing in their communities. Tens of millions more used to play the commercial retail property market around the country, from my hometown of Bournemouth to Nottingham. That portfolio has lost about 30 million pounds of Bromley council taxpayers' money. So year after year, maintenance was postponed, kicked down the road, and as Councillor King reminded us in December, Labour did make demands on this issue, but to no ends. And this approach has come back to bite, with a bill for £164 million, just as inflation and interest rates hit levels not seen in many years. The sale of some assets is unfortunately unavoidable, but the surrender of the full list for sale at the moment is a sign of panic. It's a defeatist proposal and it puts Bromley on the slippery slope of managed decline. The Conservatives are focused primarily on raising capital, as we've heard, in the short term to plug an unyet, as yet unquantified black hole. The £21 million, pounds, or close to, earmarked to spend on this rushed move, the direct line building, the so-called Project Smith, is in effect a large instalment of a bailout fund, an expensive escape from this mess. In their haste, they're giving insufficient thought to long-term questions of public value of our assets in Bromley and their value for generations to come. Because what we must avoid is saddling our children with a massive bill to reinvest in their community assets in the future. So Labour has a plan to work with joint venture partners by selling half our equity, or 49% in the direct line building, we free up nearly 10.5 million pounds of capital. We can reinvest some of this capital to secure the, in, the future of three key assets, Community House, Beckenham Public Halls, and Chipfield Road. So firstly, 1.825 million for Beckenham Public Halls. It's part of our borough's heritage, used by countless community and volunteer groups over the years, in fact, I remember it being touted as a potential new home for Beckenham Library not so long ago. It can also once again be a vibrant community hub, perhaps for local charities, small businesses, and provide the council with many times more income than the current rent of just £10,000 a year. Secondly, 1.7 million for community house. As we have heard this evening, charities have voiced their opposition to moving to the direct line building. They need somewhere 
for people to use their services to go where they feel safe and where they, refer, where they receive that support. And the evidence that we have heard is that this isn't going to be best served by a council building. Thirdly, £300,000 for Chipperfield Road, which has been the home of Bromley Valley Gymnasium for 30 years, training around 500 young people each year, each week, sorry, and providing a pathway to elite level sport. They need space and height that's hard to find. These assets are not surplus to requirements as claimed in the operational property review. And as with spending capital reserves, we can only make capital receipts from the sales once. Once they're gone, they're gone. Income from retaining half the ownership is ongoing, and our plan is sustainable both for Bromley's communities and for our finances. And what's more, sharing ownership of the direct line building has a further benefit of risk management. Working with a partner will mean we will be compelled to maintain the building properly and avoid a repeat of the mistakes that have brought us to this point. Thank you. I believe now we're going to take the Lib Dems amendment, please. Who would like to propose? Oh, we're going to circulate it. Yes. We'd like to circulate it and then we'll propose it. Yep. Yep, it's going round. So once it's gone round, we'll propose it and second it.
Do we have everybody back in the chamber? Do we know? Yep. Who are missing? Because if they're not here, they can't join in the debate or vote. <coughs> that bit's clear with the rules. Uh, You've got to be here. Just one more Who are we missing? Are we missing someone? Uh, no. Councillor. Uh, uh, yeah, Councillor. Uh, okay. Councillor Tickner. Councillor Tickner. Anybody missing on this side? Uh, no. no. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. We were waiting, otherwise you wouldn't have been able to vote. Right. Would you like to propose your amendment, Councillor Ireland? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I don't know whether to be offended that everybody chose the Lib Dem amendment to go for a comfort break or not. <laughs> um, I'm very pleased to be here. I'm very proud to be here speaking on behalf of the Lib Dem group in our first budget amendment. And I'd like to thank the officers who have been... Um, incredibly helpful in our ignorance and we promise we'll do better next year. Um, in the circumstances, our changes are really quite modest in comparison to the size of the overall budget. But we believe that the modest changes we're recommending sends a message to many groups who feel ignored and overlooked. Um, we want them to know that the council is aware of the challenges they're facing and want to start on a path to resolving these problems. We are conscious of the huge challenges faced by local authorities everywhere to maintain even basic services, given the reduction in support from the Conservative government. So I'll run through the basic elements that we're proposing. Um, we want to um, scrap the expenditure on the legal costs to fight the ULES um, uh, expansion. We continue to oppose the, um, the rollout of the ULES expansion in the way it's being recommended, but we think Bromley can continue its opposition, just like the Lib Dem run Sutton, without wasting taxpayers' money on a legal case that seems unlikely to succeed. This would save £140,000, a very relatively a small amount, but this saving can have real impact. Um, we would like to spend £20,000 funding 10 air quality nodes. Um, Breeze London are rolling out some new style nodes that give accurate PM 2.5 and NO2 readings. Um, and it will raise public awareness of air pollution in areas where really the monitoring isn't, just isn't good enough. Um, and so we think that will fund up to 10 of the Breeze London air quality nodes. We'd like to spend £50,000 helping to reinstate school streets. We had the conversation back in the council last year and we agreed that without, with, by relying on just volunteer enforcement, school streets will fail and that has um, proved to be the case. So the £50,000 very modest budget we're recommending would instate two AMPR cameras for one school. Evidence across London, where there are more than 500 school streets, shows that largely these schemes are self-funding. So we think at the end of year one, we should have enough data and enough information about the revenue and enforcement costs to decide on moving cameras to another school street at the cost of £2,000 for each move. We want to allocate another modest amount of £70,000 to fund very low cost road safety projects. Things like vehicle activated signs, writing slow on the road tarmac, these are all low cost items that um, affect a lot of areas where they just don't figure in the TfL funding um, scheme um, and uh, areas where they're facing a lengthy waiting time for very simple low cost interventions. We are also proposing to um, allocate a modest one off resilience fund from the reserves <coughs> with the expectation that by the end of the year, the cost will at least be partly offset by increased council revenue, such as higher yields due to interest rates or lower costs due to lower inflation. Um, the, we are proposing a community resilience fund of up to £500,000. This is a fund specifically designed to support community groups and individuals, and particularly including carers, through the cost of living crisis. Quite separate from the household support fund, this fund would be targeted to help groups, organisations and individuals 
who are already providing a valuable service, supporting residents in general, but who are struggling to continue because of the increased costs they face in providing this service. We also want to redirect funds from the £3 million that was allocated to manage the sale of council properties in order to save community assets. Specifically, we want to stop the sale of the freehold of Beckenham Public Halls and Community House. Instead, we want to help the community operators who are willing to take responsibility for the building to purchase and maintain them for community use. We believe it is right that the council allocate funds to secure community operators for both these buildings. These buildings were in the guardianship of the council and it has been the council's failure to maintain them that risk their future as community assets. Finally, we're identifying three very small pockets of money within existing council budgets. Um, this is, we are looking to officers to identify efficiency, savings or underspends. And given the size of the departmental budgets affected, we feel these items of expenditure are relatively small and we are confident funding can be identified. So we want £50,000 to be allocated from the Transformation Fund to pay for officer time to, deliver, to de develop a digital inclusion strategy, as we discussed here in this chamber in November, possibly creating a digital exclusion champion to make sure that every service that the council provides has support for residents who find council services difficult to access because of their lack of access to digital services. <coughs> We want to find £75,000 to support youth services. There are 78,000 young people in our borough. They have suffered years of cuts and it's time now to start supporting and expanding our support for these young people. It's a very preliminary suggestion. We want the new youth workers to develop initiatives, look for funding and engage with youth organisations and providers to look towards establishing youth centre facilities over the coming years. This reflects the Liberal Democrat commitment to support, encourage and engage with young people. And our last, again, very small and <coughs> modest ask is that we spend £50,000 to install parking meters in um, specific locations that accept card payments and don't force the users to use the Ringo app. We have had our inboxes are flooded with people and we, ha we hear stories all the time about how worried um, people are about the drop in um, tra uh, traffic to their high streets. But more than that, um, we feel this would fulfil the council's duty to support residents of visitors who cannot use the Ringo app to pay for parking and ensure accessibility to our town centre and key services. It will also provide a contingency when residents cannot access Ringo when their helpline fails to answer, which seems to happen so often. So this amendment to the budget, we feel it's modest, but we feel it will make a real difference to the residents of Bromley. And so I therefore propose the amendment. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to ask for a second there, but before I do, can I just say that if you hold the papers, causing Councillor Dunbar a terrible discomfort down there, she can't hear anything. If you hold your papers over like that, she can't, she can't hear. You need to hold your papers to one side of the microphone, please. Sorry if that's like patronising, but it's just important everyone can hear. Thank you. So, can we have a seconder, please? I think that's Councillor, Councillor Ross to second. I, I second the motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, and I'd just like to, to add, um, in regard to the um, two community assets that we want to save, um, we know that there are operators in the wings for both of those assets. They're struggling, especially with the Beckham Public Halls in particular, um, because they can't apply for external funding because of the repair bill. Um, we were told by the council officers themselves, HLF, for example, won't give them the money, otherwise every council would um, look at... Not, perhaps not maintaining buildings and applying for heritage lottery funding. And uh, one provider had said if we had some contribution or a low cost loan, that will enable us to get the other third sector funding we need to operate this building's community asset. And I think we've spoken enough about community house. So we would really encourage um, funding being made available for officers to look at either low cost loans or some contribution to get those community operators off the ground. Thank you. Thank you. 
We will now just check whether Councillor Mark Smith would like to make an amendment. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, we haven't got any particular amendment to make, but we would like to thank Mr Turner for his um, advice and guidance uh, to all three of us since we, since we got elected in the special presentation he gave us back in January. Um, we have got one amendment, but that actually comes up under the capital programme item 8, so we'll be talking about it then. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Melanie Stevens, do you have an amendment? You'll be glad to know that I don't. Thank you. I am, actually. So, we now need to open this to debate. I have been advised by the wise people to my left-hand side that we would like you to speak just the once on both the Labour amendment, the Lib Dem amendment and the substantive motion, the original motion. So I now open the debate and I believe we have Councillor McGregor who would like to speak. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And um, another person to echo thanks to the finance team and to Pete Turner for the help that they've given us. Um, Councillor Jewell has already taken you through the substance of our amendments to the budget. Principally, we're concerned about the cost of living and the effect that it's having on the less well off in the borough, the poorest people in the borough. So specifically, the council tax support reduction, which has hit everyone, it's essentially it's a 20 percent increase to them losing the discount. And that's before the 5 percent council tax <laughs> increase is applied. Um, Clearly, the cost of living crisis is not a blip, as it's been referred to earlier. So we do think that we ought to be doing whatever we can to support those residents that are the worst off. Added to that, there are the care leavers, as Councillor Jill has, has mentioned earlier. I think councillors from you know all sides of the chamber attended the Looked After Children event. It was very impressive. It was it showed that really Bromley does take its responsibility seriously as a corporate parent. It's a real shame to think that young people, when they get to the age, looked after young people when they get to the age of 18, effectively don't have that same level of support. So it doesn't seem at all unreasonable for us to consider offering a council tax exemption to those people, but, you know, when they become 18. Um, the other issue, which is principally to do with the cost of living, is the rent increase, 7% rent increase, on top of fuel increases, food cost increases, and everything, or council tax increase as well. It does seem to hard hit the, the poorer people in the borough again. In, in addition, Bromley staff are also affected by the cost of living crisis, and we think that the pay award doesn't really go far enough to look after the least well paid. So what we would propose is setting aside a proportion of the, of the merit pay um, pot and giving that to the, the people on the lowest salaries so that that, that brings their salaries up above the, above the London living wage, but also, you know, a, approaching the medium wage. Um, and, the, and the other thing, really, which is a little bit more covered in the capital, but we've spoken about the spend here, is to set aside some of the reserves. There are reserves um, allocated to invest to save. We'd like to identify some projects or for the council to do some work on identifying some projects which would deliver real savings in the revenue budget going forward. So the fact that there is an invest to save reserve, it seems a shame that we wouldn't use it to spend for example, something like maybe converting retail units, don't know if this is feasible, that's why it would need some investigation. But we are spending something like £7 million on temporary accommodation every year. So really, we need to do something to try and bring those costs down. All of the amendments that we've put in, we haven't asked to dip into reserves to any great extent other than the kind of miscellaneous earmarked reserve we have costed them and we have well we have cost we have obviously worked with the finance team they've given us all the help on that but we are um, identifying ways to fund them we've not done anything that could be considered to be irresponsible um, so I hope that you'll consider our amendment thank you I now have Councillor Price who wishes to speak Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I want to talk on two elements of our budget proposal. Firstly, the cost of living grant for charities. We want to invest in our local voluntary sector. During the pandemic, and now with the cost of living crisis, they have stepped up and helped to coordinate the amazing residents 
who have volunteered their time to support the most vulnerable people in our community. <clears throat> they have been a beacon of hope in these devastating times. And this comes at a cost to the organisations and to the individuals within them. Many use comments such as, we are on our knees, or we don't know how much longer we can keep it going. What the sector has tended to do is to meet people at the point of need. And recently, <coughs> sorry, there has been an avalanche of need. So this has been the right response. On many occasions, they have gone beyond reasonable and into their reserves to fund vital work in Bromley. To be fair, reserves are there to be spent in when times are bad. And times now are really bad. Reserves are running low for our voluntary sector and their work is needed more and more. We need to work in partnership with the sector. Bromley has a long and distinguished history of volunteering, providing hope and providing welcome. We have a high percentage of residents who are in a position of being able to give their time to volunteer which is an absolute blessing. Some amazing organisations who have truly stepped up tremendously to support and offer hope, with much praise rightly being heaped on them from all sides of the council, which has been greatly appreciated by our colleagues in the voluntary sector. We're now looking further, though, than a hand clap and to provide structural support to the voluntary sector. We propose to launch a £1 million fund to support key partners with costs over the next three years to cover core costs, meaning that they will not only be able to deliver services, but they will be able to ensure that the services they are running are running well and that hope can thrive. In the voluntary sector, no one tends to fund the office administrators or the finance managers who support the charity leaders to develop services which provide sustainable futures for organisations and for service users. To be able to look further ahead and provide organisations and the borough during the cost of living crisis means that they can be there, providing the appropriate support and not just a crisis management response. It means that they can be there when they are needed most and beyond, focusing on futures and not just the next meal. We are also looking to propose to set up a food action security post within the organisations with a £60,000 a year fund to fund one post. This will help coordinate organisations working with people who are living with low and very low levels of food security, including families that are not able to access free school meals. This is more than just coordinating access to healthy and affordable food. This can help to reduce duplication of services. It can help to focus on putting dignity at the heart of so service delivery. It will help to develop training and well-being support for volunteers that can be shared across the borough. The Mayor of London has released funds for Bromley to seed this work. These should be released in the next couple of weeks. And our voluntary sector has taken up this offer. The funds we are proposing will strengthen what has been started and give the sector and the council the resources to look at solutions. Solutions that will help to end the need for people in Bromley to have to go to charities to ask for food, as they no longer have any other options. The current situation drains hope from residents. It's our voluntary sector in their amazing work that instills hope back in. This fund will help to build stronger and more resilient structures, stronger relationships with food and more secure finances and the birthing of hope.
for many who are disadvantaged. This fund will start on a journey where we can see dignified access to affordable food for all and the right for them to see their dreams not being crushed. In times of crisis, we as councillors have the responsibility to think beyond survival. I therefore urge you to agree to this ambitious motion and to have our most disadvantaged community members and help them to thrive. So I'll end with the words of Nelson Mandela. It is in your hands to create a better world for all who live in it. The next I have here is Councillor Igo, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, right, I'm going to read the Labour proposals within the Environment Portfolio. Um, we will provide Fair Parks funding for the whole borough. Bromley residents constantly complain to me and my colleagues of boarded up children's play equipment, broken benches, litter and even rats. These are not the beautiful Bromley parks I knew as a child. Labour will provide £5 million funding to protect and maintain Bromley parks. Kelsey Park has been allowed to fall into a state of neglect. The Conservatives have allocated £2 million for it. However, no papers on the specific details of the £2 million have been presented, so members have not been able to scrutinise it. Labour will rephase the £2 million by taking a more strategic approach to managing the park. We will set up a trust to take over its management, as has been done for Crystal Palace Park. This will allow us more time to engage with residents and plan what work is needed, ask residents how they would like the money spent. Three million pounds will be used as wider Bromley Parks funding. Maintenance works will be phased over three years to allow a plan that's achievable by our contractors. Labour will engage and listen to our hardworking friends groups, the volunteers who give so much of their free time, asking them to help us plan and schedule the priorities for spending on the parks and green spaces they work so hard in. It's been disappointing to see the way our parks have been let down and the imbalance of funding from the controlling party. We cannot ignore the fact that large amounts of money are being thrown at areas within a constituency the Conservatives know they may lose at the next general election. Uh, free community bulk waste surface is something that Labour would like to propose. <coughs> Um, fly tipping is a particularly difficult, difficult issue in Bromley. People seem to prefer to dump rather than pay for the council's paid collection service. And this will only get worse as the cost of living crisis continues. The Labour group proposed a free community bulk waste service with man skips open on specific days in specific locations where residents who bring proof of residency can dispose of three bulky items each visit. Brent and Barnet councils already run such a service. We will have a dedicated web page on the council website with links that work to charities and organisations where good quality items can be donated. And if the items are not suitable to be recycled, we'd indicate the times and dates of where the free community bulk waste service will be operating that week. <coughs> Labour are budgeting £200,000 a year for each of the next four years to run this service, a service which will save the council money as it will reduce the amount of fly tipping that we're currently seeing. On clean air monitors, well, we have one live active air quality monitor in central Bromley, plus a few diffusion tubes spread around the borough. The latest available annual air quality status report on our website is from 2020. We are now well into 2023. We're still waiting for the air quality action plan to be freely available on the council website. Drafted in 2020, the plan is required to state the actions to be taken to monitor and reduce the exceedances of nitrogen dioxide that forced us to greatly expand our air quality management area to over more than half of this borough. So Labour wants to move faster than this snail's pace. We will spend £120,000 a year to install and maintain 10 clean air monitors in loca locations across the borough. We'll place them on busy roads, outside schools and in locations where transport pollution is worse. Labour will publish the data and won't hide from discussing Bromley's air pollution with residents. Residents deserve full and frank information on issues affecting their health. And lastly, on school streets. A road outside a school, a temporary restriction on motorised traffic at school drop-off time and pick-up times, a simple one hour at either end of the day. When we can make our streets safer for children travelling to school, encourage them to be healthier by promoting walking, scooting and cycling, 
and we can reduce road traffic pollution alongside schools, pollution that can damage children's lungs. There are over 500 school streets across London. Over 370 of those were started with funding from street space. We were allocated for funding for 11 school streets, and we currently have just two because the majority have failed. Bromley schools, already struggling with rising costs and inadequate government funding, don't have the money to fund them. Labour will spend £50,000 a year paying the cost of maintaining an initial 10 school streets, and we look to increase support to other interested schools in the future. Labour will lead the borough on protecting Bromley children as they travel to school. Thank you. Councillor Michael, you wish to speak. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Mayor. While other members have been speaking, I have been perusing the proposals put forward by the opposition, and I'll just pick up on a few of them. The one that really catches my eye, um, cancel the ULES uh, challenge, and that comes from both Labour and the Liberal Democrats. And I find it amazing that for all their talk about helping the poorest uh, people who are hit most by the rising cost of living, both main opposition parties actually support ULES, a Robin Hood in reverse tax that will hit the poorest drivers in London hardest. They'll have to pay £12.50 a day to travel on their own, to drive on their own local roads. This is a tax that is going to hurt individuals, those working in public services and businesses alike. And I find it amazing that Unison and Unite the Union are actually calling on the mayor to at least postpone or ameliorate ULES because they know that many of their lower paid workers or members simply cannot afford to buy new cars. So I'm just flabbergasted that you want to counsel something that could help the poorest Londoners. There is, of course, no guarantee that Bromley's council's challenge will succeed. But if you don't try, you don't get. Um, I'll just pick up on a couple of other things. Uh, you want to cancel ULEZ, but you also want to spend money on clean air monitors, all 10 of them around the borough. But you know, what is the information alone going to do um, to, to, to improve the clean air? You need action, not just spending more and more money. Um, pay award. Uh, reduce, Labour wants to reduce merit pay by nearly 50%. So now we know that Labour doesn't want to reward our dedicated staff who excel at their jobs and who, go the, uh, who, who make the effort to go the extra mile to serve the public in Bromley. Interesting. Um, as for the Bromley Community Celebration Fund, well, I think the whole of the community in Bromley will be celebrating that none of these items are going to be passed this evening. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You have a point of order, Councillor Jim? I have a point of personal information regarding to Councillor Michael's uh, speech, if that's permitted, Madam Mayor. Personal. 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 It's, it's regarding our proposal uh, and mischaracterisation of some of the proposals. Sorry. I'm happy to withdraw as Councillor Kennedy Brooks will be covering it. Right, Councillor King, thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the, the Conservatives are proposing um, uh, a significant rise this year and I note that this is very different from what they proposed last year when there was no when they proposed a so-called um, freeze which was nothing of the sort and cynics would um, probably not be surprised that this was the year when there was an election this year there is no such election and of course they're proposing a significant rise and as well as a much smaller increase in council tax last year there was absolutely no mention of the sell-off of significant and loved buildings such as the Beckenham Public Halls and the Community House. One can only speculate on what the effect 
um, would have been on, on the polls of any political party or candidate proposing their sell-off. I'm sure they wouldn't actually have received a positive response. It's a shame that uh, this wasn't this knowledge wasn't known to the electorate then. Thank you. Councillor McParland. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I understand that these are tough times. Well, they're also tough times for the care leader who can't pay their council tax bill. They're tough for the London Borough of Bromley employee who's paid less than the London living wage. And they're also tough for Bromley Valley Gymnastics, whose very home and future is at risk thanks to this Conservative budget. For years, members opposite have boasted about making surpluses and brilliant financial management. Well, now we're seeing the reality of that brilliant financial management. And as my colleagues have already mentioned, this is a budget that's built around the Bromley Conservatives' failure to, quite literally, fix the roof while the sun was shining. Now, the people and non-profits in Bromley will pay for these serious Conservative failures. This budget may not send the markets into meltdown like previous National Conservative budget, but it sells off our prized community buildings, leaves our most vulnerable residents with little or no help, and does nothing to prevent the very many issues that hit all of our inboxes every single day. The truth is that this Conservative budget is a bad news budget. It's bad news for our most vulnerable residents, bad news for many of our non-profits and community groups, and quite simply, bad news for everybody in this borough. Like I said, I understand that times are tough, but the Labour group here has shown that there is another way and I urge everybody to back that way. Councillor Tyrell. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, through my role as Councillor Cuthbert's Executive Assistant, I'm leading on the repairs to Kelsey Park Bridge. And as the Labour group have brought it up numerous times this evening, I wanted to address these points. Firstly, that I'm disappointed that three times this evening the Labour group have taken aim at the repairs to Kelsey Park Bridge. I'd like to put on record my thanks to Wendy and the brilliant Friends Group, as well as councillors Dean, Harris and Smith for their work in helping to see this project through. Madam Mayor, I'm afraid that the facts just don't support Labour's narrative because the money we're using to repair the bridge or the majority of the money we're using to repair the bridges were agreed last year. They were earmarked last year prior to the election. So the idea that now that the result in Kelsey and Eden Park Ward last year has impacted our ability to repair the bridges is just false. And I'm disappointed to hear from Council Igo that the Labour Group's amendment would actually delay the repairs to these bridges. It seems to be the two faces of the Labour Group that on Twitter they call for us to act and repair the bridges in this chamber. They call for delay. It just doesn't add up and that's why I'll be opposing this amendment. Councillor Colin Smith. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Madam Mayor, just a few words on the amendments, if I may. Um, I wish the Labour group this time last year. It, if you'd actually set a budget amendment, it would have been a start. But if you could have told us that Ukraine was going to kick off and inflation was going up to 11 percent, that would have been so helpful. Um, unfortunately, you neglected to either set a budget amendment or let us know that. So when you're settling contracts, as officers now are somewhere in the high single figures, low double figures, they're settling on the January uh, RPI X, I believe, one of the indices, whatever. <coughs> that is what is causing this year's council tax, unfortunately, to be as high as it is. And I would agree with everyone that said it's disappointing. It is. We hoped to have a string of relatively low rises back to back, but that's been thwarted. Madam Mayor, I don't want to speak too much on this because I want to speak to the substantive motion, but I have to pick up on a few points. The losing 30 million on the investments uh, is, is having another outing. It, it isn't a loss. You only lose money if you sell something for less than you purchase it for, and there is no intention to sell those buildings. So there isn't a loss. Direct line, 
don't worry about the tenants down there, Councillor Jill. We have tenants lined up. We would love if they wanted to come. Uh, the, the colleagues from community, community House join us. If they don't wish to, that's absolutely their right, and I wouldn't have that any other way. Borrowing. Um, did we know this time last year we were planning to borrow? No, we didn't. But what we have had a look at since, and what we can see a crying need for, is more housing. And the only thing we will borrow for in this council, the only thing this administration will ever borrow for, is housing so that we have some equity against the debt we're taking on, rather like any normal householder would do. Um, we've heard several uh, people talk about the poorest. Uh, that's noble, quite right too. Yet, weren't you the people speaking about Sadiq Khan's latest proposal around so-called free school meals? Aren't you the people that's supporting Sadiq's 9.74% um, preset rise. Aren't you the people that are supporting £12.50 a day to drive from Seven Oaks to Beckenham to see your mum when she's not well? Yes. You know, you, which way do you want it? You can't have it both ways. You, know, you can't have it both ways. The Civic Centre. No. It, the direct line move is sound common sense. If we were to build a new Civic Centre, and that's what we'd be talking about, building a fit for purpose building the costs will be significantly higher than we're paying for the move to direct line. The timing of the move has been fantastically fortuitous. So no repairs needed, a significant capital asset. Um, and we hear about health. Uh, last, one of the last speakers mentioned health and honesty. Absolutely. Let's have an honest debate about health. Let's have an honest debate about the so-called ULES making fresh air cleaner when Bromley already has cleaner air than every single borough in the existing ULES. Let's have some honesty. If you want to introduce road price charging, be man enough to say it. Don't hide behind false health, health scares because it's totally unacceptable. Um, turning to the Dem colleagues, um, you'll appreciate I had a wry smile when I heard that you oppose ULES. Um, not least given the vote in this chamber several months ago, where both groups opposite voted against the Conservative opposition to ULES. Um, you'll understand I had a wry smile on my face because the LDGLA members voted in favour of the budget that facilitated buying the cameras that have already been bought last April by the look of it. Um, so there's another discussion there to be had. So you'll appreciate a slight degree of cynicism there. Aspects of your budget actually, I thought were reasonable. Place to do this isn't in a full council chamber where people have to make decisions involving tens of millions of pounds. These need to be taken through committees so they can be considered and evaluated, lined up against all the other spending priorities. And I would respectfully ask and encourage you to do that because some of your proposals, I agree, would be nice if we can find some headroom to do it. So, Madam Mayor, from this side of the Chamber's perspective, um, I think we're nearly ready to move to the vote on the amendments. There may be one or two other colleagues here ready to speak. I'm not sure, but we're ready to get to the substantive motion as quickly as possible. I, I have everybody in order. My CEO is making sure that we don't miss anybody. So, Councillor Fulthrop, you're the next one up, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, it's uh, interesting to see that at least this year the Labour Party put forward an amendment. Of course, there's a process that goes into making the budget and we have a scrutiny committee meetings going from about probably early December all the way through to today. And at those meetings, I do say to the opposition, so anything you want to bring forward, anything you'd like to tell me about, anything that you want to get changed in the budget because this is a good chance to have a look at it and look at it seriously and i'm sure madam mayor that you're aware of what they do they still present a blank piece of paper absolutely nothing to say when it comes to the detail of the budget about for the people of this borough and they do it 
year after year, and I invite them, and I would welcome their input. But no, they do this every year, and it's, it's a shame. This is why this is a do-nothing budget from the Labour Party. And why is it do-nothing? Well, first of all, I tell you what, we won't buy direct line outright. We'll just have 51% of it. But they haven't come forward with a buyer for the other 49%. They don't know how they would remunerate that person if they came or people or company if they came forward. So it, it doesn't have anything behind it. It's a, a method to delay matters. We are facing some critical decisions, Madam Mayor. It's important we get on with them and not delay like the Labour Party is suggesting. And then, of course, um, within their budget and the Lib, Lib Dems, they don't want us to challenge the ULES because, because they don't want us to stand up for the majority of people in Greater London that answered that survey and said to Mr Khan, no, we don't want it. And the last thing they want is a legal challenge because that might actually prove that Mr Khan is, is wrong. While all the time they're supporting his you know, nearly 10% increase in council tax. And then, of course, um, I just want to talk about the um, council tax support because uh, if in reality you take into account the 10% increase in, um, in, in universal credit that's coming in April. Actually, after our increase, which is roughly £1.70 odd a week for the average person, they, they will actually be something like £26, £27 a month better off with, a, with someone on universal credit. So, you know, let's put these things in, in perspective. And, and let's talk about the fact that they are raiding the merit payments of, uh, of our employees. People who work hard, and when they get an achievement, they get a merit award. When their work is seen to be outstanding, they get a merit award. And actually, that merit award is worth, worth far more than the £28 a year after tax that you're proposing to give them with your increase. It's far better for them. And believe me, and because the merit award is tax free, it's even better. And then we just want to talk about the so-called, and Councillor Smith has touched on this, the 30 million pound uh, in, in, that you're talking about in terms of our investment loss, losses. Well, as you know, and Councillor Adams sits on the ERC committee, so he knows full well that actually the ones that we're losing money on, the vast majority, are our investments in our town centre. And we've invested in the town centre for strategic reasons, not for money-making reasons. They just happen to be lumped in with the investments. And we've done that because we feel and we care about what happens to our town centre. So you now, it sounds as though you want to sell off those assets at a loss. And that's, that's what you're talking about. So... Let's uh, 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 carry on on a, on a few other things. Um, then, so there's no loss. We're not selling them, so there's no loss. So just get up and uh, do that. You know, ultimately, and we've talked to, and Councillor Smith again touched on inflation. All of our contracts, that's the contracts that we have with our suppliers, have an inflation clause within them. And I can't remember who it is, but the Lib Dems possibly wanted to take inflation out of that, uh, take money out of the inflation uh, fund so that actually you can do something else with it, set up 500. Well, that's probably going to be needed. And until we know at the end of the year where, where we are on that, we'll probably have to do that. Most of the, the contracts that are coming through now are in the region of 10%, as Councillor Smith has indicated. We're hoping and we know that inflation will fall throughout the year and that will bring benefits to people. And uh, just one, one other thing, and that's what I must say, and that is on this side of the chamber, we will always take and make sensible choices. We haven't rushed into the decisions we're taking tonight, but these are for the long term of this council, the decisions that we will take. If we had 
you know, followed previous Labour budget amendments, there wouldn't have been any reserves. So actually, actually, we are in a much better position because we didn't follow the Labour Party, because we didn't follow other parties' amendments. And therefore, Madam Chairman, I will be voting against those amendments and I will be supporting the budget as proposed by Councillor Marlow and seconded by Councillor Smith. Councillor Tickner. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> I'll be brief. Well, I'll be briefer than Councillor Forthrop. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm concerned to hear from the Labour Party, spend, spend, spend. And um, they've had proposals one after another, you know, free waste collection of bulky items, five million on parks, create a post at 60,000 a year to coordinate access in the voluntary sector. Mm. It's the voluntary sector. We have many retired professionals who could coordinate the voluntary sector. We don't need to be funding a 60,000 post for that. And also another quote tonight, we've heard reserves are there to be spent. Reserves are there to be spent. I, I think, uh, you know, the Labour Party have a real problem. They want to uh, keep on topping up the lowest paid. They keep quoting the London living wage. <coughs> what is the London living wage? It's a phony contrived index that's only recognised by socialists. <laughs> So, so to finish off, uh, the Labour Party say they are concerned about the cost of living for residents in Bromley, and we are all concerned about the cost of living for residents in Bromley. We're also concerned about the cost of living for residents in Croydon. And the problem the Labour Party has is our residents in Bromley only have to look next door to Croydon to see how the Labour Party manage their finances. Councillor Kennedy Brooks. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And um, let's just thank that we didn't put 15% through, um, like our neighbours. Um, OK, I just wanted to, I wasn't going to speak on this, but I just needed to speak because the opposition had, um, my opposition, my yeah. opposition, <laughs> my opposition. <laughs> Always been. So, All right. you know, <laughs> it's just a um, Has, uh, understandably, they've looked at our budget and uh, have issues with that. But I think it's only fair to be fair. And Councillor Michael, for instance, said that when it came to the merit payments, that we were taking the merit payments down, which is actually false because last year it was 200 and we are raising it to 220 you're raising it to 400 but we are raising it and with the other 180,000 we are guaranteeing it to those workers those staff on lower pay rather than Oh, Madam so, Mayor, point, I would, point of order, it was actually £400,000 last year, the merit payments. It wasn't budgeted. Uh, it wasn't budgeted. And, um, yeah, I'd love to hear which um, staff uh, Councillor Smith would like to say aren't working well. Um, I think they've been working very hard in the last yes. few years. Thank you. Another thing from Councillor Forthrock, who... Um, always love to hear his kind words. Um, <laughs> and um, except haven't heard today about the uh, electric charging point. <laughs> but what I did think, he must have been reading papers on that because we, in fact, this year have been putting through things through committee. And we have been offering before the budget things that we would like to see do. And some of them have even been accepted. And you will nod your head now, but you stood up and passionately denied that a minute ago. And another thing is, um, yeah, the 
The other thing I would like to pick up on with the Lib Dems as well, who are uh, against the ULES, as we all been like to talk tonight, also in agreement that we should not be spending that money on the legal challenge. I think that shows really, mm. okay, that it's not about whether anyone agrees or disagrees. No one's said whether they agree or disagree. Not, not to a person, everyone has said the way we've said it. So what it's about is, do we think that is a worthwhile spend of money? Do we think that it's going to be something that changes? You may, you may, but I'm saying what we feel, okay? It was rhetorical. <laughs> yeah, rhetorical. So I just really want to get out there that I understand if you want to attack our budget, it's all very well, okay? But there are things that actually, if you really look at it, you've said tonight, which, you know, I think you should really look and say is that there surely must be other stuff there that you can attack and it actually have basis behind it. Don't start making things up. Councillor Connolly, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I would just like to say I really appreciate hearing the progressive ideas that we've had on this side of the chamber this evening, both from the Labour group and the Lib Dem amendment. Um, and hopefully the, the public will agree as well. Um, but I do have a... But uh, including on the cost of living, on the school, street, school streets, clean air, just to name a few, supporting the Beckenham Public Calls Community House. But unfortunately, I would just like to pick up on Councillor Michael's comments that I took personal offence to, and I'd like to give her the opportunity to explain her comments. When she, took, when she talked about how she is looking forward to celebrating and maybe her Conservative group look forward to celebrating, rejecting the amendment when she's talking directly about Labour's um, Appendix to Community Celebration Fund, which talks about events celebrating holidays, festivals or other events to celebrate communities, living in Bromley in the borough, Remembrance Sunday, Black History Month, Pride, Hanukkah, Chinese New Year. What do you mean by these comments? Councillor Weber. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Just very briefly to pick up on a, on a couple of points that have been raised in relation to, to our amendment. We, we are calling, as, as my colleague Councillor Ireland said, uh, alongside our, our colleagues in Sutton for, uh, for a delay in the implementation of, of ULES. We're, we're on record as saying that. Uh, and that is, that is where we, we stand on that. We just don't believe that the £140,000 is a good use of, of taxpayers' money. But we absolutely are calling for a delay. I think we're in agreement with consumer finance expert Martin Lewis on agreeing that, uh, that the timing is pretty rough for this scheme uh, as it stands. And, and we would echo that. I just wanted to pick up very briefly on, on two other points uh, covered within our motion, which I think are clearly linked. Um, the, the, the lack of access to digital technology, calling on um, more support for, for those residents who don't have access to digital technology, I think is, is crucial. And it's something we, to follow what the, the leader said, it's something we raised in the December meeting, uh, echoing his, his call to, to those of us on this side. Uh, we, it would be great, great to get an update on that because we, we uh, in, uh, oppos members opposite enthusiastically supported uh, Councillor Ross's motion on that night, knowing it would go to committee and have further scrutiny. So uh, we have gone through that process. It would be great to get an update on that. And I think speaking out for those residents that we would all have, I've had phone calls uh, and, and other contact from, from them, uh, an email indeed, but they don't necessarily uh, don't necessarily want to download Ringo or be forced into it, which is covered by our cash-free parking uh, meters uh, uh, point. If, if it's good enough for the newly opened uh, Prue Hospital car park to have parking machines that do accept card payments. I don't see why the council can't roll that out as has been proposed extensively uh, through Environment Committee and in, and in a, a hefty debate. So I think at, speaking out for those residents who, who aren't able to engage with us sufficiently, who are just seeing services taken away uh, with very little warning and are contacting us uh, saying how are they able to engage with the council in this way, knowing that parking meters are being taken away and that potentially threats to, to counter services. We'd want to see those protected in the future. We know how uh, central those are for our residents that rely on uh, a face-to-face -face contact with our officers. Uh, so thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. As much as I don't want to ask this question, does any other member wish to speak? <laughs> and not yet. We don't. Uh, is that on your right to reply? Little. Is that on the amendment? We'd have to take the votes first, then you have your right to reply on the substantive motion. Yeah. Unless you wanted to speak on the amendments. I want to speak to the amendments, Okay. Okay. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Where to begin? Um, while all on this side of the chamber, we expected, um, you know, criticisms and amendments from the other side. Um, and there have been some, some biting but coherent points that have been made. I've been extremely disappointed by the bad faith arguments principally made by Councillor Geel this evening. The leader has already rightly dismissed the contention that the council has lost £30 million on properties that we have no intention to sell. Councillor Geel has criticised the council um, for low interest rates. Um, the, you know, Councillor Geel works in financial services. Making criticisms of us due to actions that are totally beyond our control is bad faith, and really, we can do better in this chamber. No, I will, I will continue. Um, as for Councillor Adams' proposal on a joint venture to acquire Direct Line, while that does have merit in that it would reduce the capital commitment that the council pays, it is naive in the sense that he effectively proposed that because we would have 51% we could do whatever we liked and you know the other party would merely provide capital and have no say there is no body that would agree an engagement on such terms and if we don't have full ownership we don't have full control um councillor Geel chose to criticize mr turner our director of finance um saying that he didn't know what all the reserves are for um i think councillor Geel, if you spent as much time as i have with mr turner you would know that that is a very false claim indeed yeah, um, we've had the criticism of, of merit pay. Um, so what the Bromley Labour Group is saying is that they would like to take manager discretion away from Bromley managers to reward outperformers amongst council staff and maybe hint to underperformers how they can improve. I, I think merit pay is a real innovation in Bromley. We should be proud of it and I'm delighted that we're proposing um, to expand it. But the greatest problem, Madam Mayor and members, with the Labour programme is that they're very happy to talk about the impact on the revenue budget of what they're proposing. But what about the capital programme? I, I won't take the 10 million that they've said we can get by doing a joint venture with Direct Line because we wouldn't have control. So if you take that and you take the disposal proceeds from the three other properties, you get a figure of 30 million pounds which we're not going to get under the Labour proposals because they want to keep those assets to retain the income and for their community value. Well, if we don't get £30 million, members, then we need to delete £30 million from the capital programme. I don't recall hearing Labour members proposing, you know, things like cancelling or shutting down the Walnuts Leisure Centre um, or a legion of other things that would potentially be required in order to meet that deficit. Or, there's another answer, members, we could just borrow the money. You know, that's often the favourite Labour tactic. Um, and if we were to borrow £30 million at a rate of 4.5%, that would cost the council £1.4 million a year. So of the £5 million of um, extra spending that Labour are proposing, almost a third of it would be eaten up by extra interest payments. So I'm afraid, members, this has been half a proposal um, and the impact on the capital programme, which has been such a focus this year, was not properly addressed. Turning now more briefly to the Liberal Democrats, um, it's very hard to keep track what the Liberal Democrats' stance on ULEZ is. At the GLA, they supported it. Um, at this council, initially, they supported it, but now they are opposing it. And the leaders of Lib Dem councils in London are opposing it. So it's just a reminder of that principled incoherence, which is such a fundamental aspect of the Liberal Democrats. Um, now, a comment to both the members of the Lib Lab Pact opposite on the legal challenge and the contention that it is not value for money. Um, Madam Mayor, did you know that £140,000 is what it would cost 30 residents, that's three zero, to drive their cars every day if they had to pay the ULES fare? 
Now, it's true that the legal challenge may not succeed. Councillor Michael alluded to that earlier. But if it were to succeed, what a brilliant insurance policy that would be. And if just think of the sums that that would save our residents if we were to prevail in that judicial review. Um, I, as for the comments on um, council tax support, um, I will mainly address those when we eventually come to that item. But what I would say, members, is that when we consulted Bromley residents, they supported our proposals. I don't think we should second guess them. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Right. I have now been told that um, Councillor Geo has a personal explanation to be made. Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, I would like to directly address some of the uh, inaccuracies and comments that Councillor Marlowe just made regarding my speech. First of all, regarding, uh, you said interest rates, I think you probably meant inflation, but I would just take issue with the fact that you just said that we were blaming you for them. As I very clearly said in my speech, we were not blamed, but in fact, I expressed sympathy that it was an impact on this council and acknowledged that it was not something that you could be blamed for. So that is completely the opposite of what I actually said. Um, the idea of bad faith about losing 30 million, um, they are down by 30 million in value. And I take your point that you're saying you're not going to sell them. But a year ago, you weren't saying you're going to sell 65 million in assets. So who knows what you're going to be selling in a year's time? I don't agree it's bad faith on the basis that actually that we have clear evidence in reports that there is a 30 million value loss on those investment properties. And regarding criticism of Pete Turner, I was not making any such criticism. And I apologise if Pete feels that I was in any way. What I was highlighting was that at Executive and Resources, when we asked what was in the miscellaneous reserves, we were told that, that we, he didn't know. And that is not a criticism. There are a number of earmark reserves, as I've highlighted tonight. Some of them have been there for decades and we haven't used them. So it's not surprising that anybody doesn't know. And so it was not a criticism. And I would just like to make on the record that those criticisms I do not feel were valid. Madam Mayor, I do work in finance, so I will acknowledge that that is correct. Mr. Turner's, not, <laughs> Mr. Turner's not able to defend himself, Madam Mayor. What we agreed is when asked on the spot if he knew every single line item, yeah. he wasn't able to identify every single line item, but he could say that he was going to Thank do a report on it, thought. and that is going to come. Thank you. So I just wanted to correct that Thank for, you. for Mr. Turner. <sighs> Councillor Stevens. Thank you, Madam Mayor. As we're um, at a, a point of correction, it is to be appreciated there is one party that side of the, the room. There is five this side. Could you please clarify who you're talking about and stop referring to us as that side? Thank you. OK, now we will go to a recorded vote on the first amendment. So we're going to a recorded vote for the Labour's amendment, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Members, I shall call out your name. Please would you indicate how you wish to vote on the amendment, whether for, against or abstaining. Uh, Councillor Adams. Yes. Councillor Andrews. Against. Councillor Arnold. Four. Councillor Bainbridge. Against. Councillor Bannis. Four. Councillor Bear. Against. Councillor Bennett. <laughs> Councillor Bennett. Against. Sorry. Councillor Kim Botting. Against. Councillor Mike Botting. Against. Councillor Brock. Against. Councillor Cartwright. Against. Councillor Casey. Abstain. Councillor Connolly. Abstain. Councillor Cuthbert. Councillor Cuthbert. Councillor Dean? Against. Councillor Dunbar? Against. Councillor Evans? Against. Councillor Forthrop? Negative. Councillor Gabbert? Against. Councillor Grant? Against. Councillor Gray, Madam Mayor? Abstain. Councillor Gupta? Against. against. Councillor Harris? Against. Councillor Igo? Four. Councillor Ireland? Abstain. Councillor Jack? Against. Councillor Jill? Four. Councillor Jeffries. Against. Councillor Joel. Against. Councillor Kennedy Brooks. Four. Councillor King. Four. Councillor Laidlaw. Against. Councillor Lee. Against. Councillor Lima. Against. 
Councillor Marlowe. Yes. Councillor McGregor. Four. Councillor McPartland. Four. Councillor Michael. Against. Councillor Onslow. Against. Councillor Owen. Against. Councillor Page. Against. Councillor Price. Four. Councillor Ross. Against. Councillor Rowlands. Against. Councillor Slater. Against. Councillor Colin Smith. Against. Councillor Diane Smith. Against. Councillor Mark Smith. Against. Councillor Stammers. Against. Councillor Stevens. Against. Councillor Stranger. Against. Councillor Thompson. In favour. Councillor Tickner. Against. Councillor Tannicliffe. Against. Councillor Tarrell. Against. Councillor Weber. Abstain. Councillor Whiffen. Four. The, the amendment is lost. Get to use my camera. Now we're going for the recorded vote um, on the second amendment, which is the Lib Dem amendment. And we'll read out the names again. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, members, would you please vote, um, uh, indicate how you wish to vote on this amendment. Councillor Adams. Abstain. Councillor Andrews. Against. Councillor Arnold. Abstain. Councillor Bainbridge. Against. Councillor Bans. Councillor Bear. Against. Councillor Bennett. Against. Councillor Kim Botting. Against. Councillor Mike Botting. Against. Councillor Brock. Against. Councillor Cartwright. Against. Councillor Casey. Four. Councillor Connolly. Four. Councillor Cuthbert. Against. Councillor Dean. Against. Councillor Dunbar. Against. Councillor Evans. Against. Councillor Forthrup. No, thank you. Councillor Gabbard. Against. Councillor Grant. Against. Councillor Gray. Abstain. Councillor Gupta. Against. Councillor Harris. Councillor Igo. Abstain. Councillor Ireland. Councillor Jack. Against. Councillor Jeel. Abstain. Councillor Jeffries. Against. Councillor Joel. Against. Councillor Kennedy Brooks. Abstain. Councillor King. Abstain. Councillor Laidlaw. Against. Councillor Lee. Against. Councillor Lima. Against. Councillor Marlowe. Councillor McGregor. Abstain. Councillor McPartland. Abstain. Ma Councillor Michael. Against. Councillor Onslow. Against. Councillor Owen. Against. Councillor Page. Against. Councillor Price. Abstain. Councillor Ross. In favour. Councillor Rowlands. Against. Councillor Slater. Against. Councillor Colin Smith. Against. Councillor Diane Smith. Against. Councillor Mark Smith. Against. Councillor Stammers. Against. Councillor Stevens. Against. Councillor Stranger. Against. Councillor Thompson. Abstain. Councillor Tickner. Against. Councillor Tannicliffe. Against. Councillor Tarrell. Against. Councillor Weber. Four. Councillor Whiffin. Abstain. That amendment is lost. <coughs> Members, the meeting has now lasted three hours. And under Council Procedure Rule 8, I must draw this to your attention. I propose that Council Procedure Rule 8 be suspended to allow the meeting to continue until business is concluded. Is that agreed? Thank you. We now go back to the original motion. And <coughs> Councillor Colin Smith, you reserved your right to speak. Madam Mayor, I, I did, and I will be brief given the uh, given the time. In fact, I will rip up my speech uh, and be that quick. Um, Madam Mayor, uh, the word disappointing was used, and it, it frankly is somewhat disappointing to have to present a budget of 4.99 all in. Um, it, it is scant consolation, frankly, that it's half the rate of inflation, um, half the rate of the mayor's rise. That doesn't make it any more palatable for people who may be struggling, who have to dig a little bit deeper. Um, the only thing I can tell you, Madam Mayor and everyone else, is this administration will reset the figures. We've obviously been knocked sideways by the spike in inflation food prices, commodity prices, oil prices, gas prices. That is going to take some time to put right, but we will put it right. 
we will get these council finances back. One of the things facing the local government family as a whole, um, and we're already seeing, and let's not be political about it tonight, we could, but what's the point? There are councils of various political hues physically falling over already. There's a conveyor belt and every single council in this country is on it. Some are nearer the end than others. Some are falling off the end. Here in Bromley, we will be one of the last councils to fall, but we will fall like everyone else if the current funding regime for local government isn't changed. It's just a matter of time. So what we must do in the meanwhile, we absolutely must control revenue spend and we must make sure that every capital spend we spend um, it has been put out, can only be spent once, and we must do that properly. Madam Mayor, um, it's slightly strange being lectured by colleagues uh, in the Labour group opposite. OK. <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, by the colleagues in the Labour group opposite um, about prudent bookkeeping. Um, the one thing I will have for a report that Mr Turner has undertaken for me today is had we taken... <coughs> Every amendment that had been posed by the Labour group, your predecessors mainly, I grant, over the last 20 years. <laughs> you may laugh, but if you're laughing at what I'm about to tell you, I think your residents will probably want an explanation. This council would have an additional revenue budget of £53 million it needed to find. Council tax in effect would be 30% higher than it is today. And quite how that helps poorer people, or whether that's excellent as well, I'll leave you to judge. And Madam Mayor, the other thing that we would have had to find is an additional 70 million for capital. So our reserves would have been 70 million pound lower and our council tax would have been 30% higher. So those are the mistakes we mustn't make here in this chamber. What we must do is ensure that every pound we spend of Bromley Council taxpayers' money is spent in a focused way on our corporate priorities. Madam Mayor, I'll leave it there. I've got about 20 minutes worth I would love to have gone on for, but as due to the time, I'll park up there. I'm very happy to second the motion. Thank you. I'll now put the motion as moved by Councillor Marlowe and seconded by Councillor Smith to the vote. Um, I will ask members, you will ask members alphabetically for a recorded vote, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Members, would you please indicate how you wish, wish to vote on the motion? Um, Councillor Adams. Against. Councillor Andrews. For. Councillor Arnold. Against. Councillor Bainbridge. For. Councillor Vance. Against. Councillor Bear. For. Councillor Bennett. For. Councillor Kimbotting. For. Councillor Mike Botting. For. Councillor Brock. For. Councillor Cartwright. For. Councillor Casey. Against. Councillor Connolly. Against. Councillor Cuthbert. For. Councillor Dean. For. Councillor Dunbar. For. Councillor Evans. For. Councillor Forthrup. Affirmative. Councillor Gabbard. For. Councillor Grant. For. Councillor Gray. Abstain. Councillor Gupta. For. Councillor Harris. For. Councillor Igo. Yeah. Councillor Ireland. Yeah. Councillor Jack. Four. Councillor Jeel. Against. Councillor Jeffries. Four. Councillor Joel. Councillor Joel. Four. Councillor Kennedy Brooks. Against. Councillor King. Against. Councillor Laidlaw. Four. Councillor Lee. Four. Councillor Lima. Four. Councillor Marlowe. Four. Councillor McGregor. Against. Councillor McPartland. Against. Councillor Michael. Four. Councillor Onslow. Four. Councillor Owen. Four. Councillor Page. Four. Councillor Ross. Against. Councillor Rowlands. Four. Councillor Slater. Four. Councillor Colin Smith. Four. Councillor Diane Smith. Four. Councillor Mark Smith. Four. Councillor Sammers. Four. Councillor Stevens. Four. Councillor Stranger. Four. Councillor Thompson. Yes. Councillor Tickner. Four. Councillor Tannicliffe. Four. Councillor Tarrell. Four. Councillor Webber. Councillor Whiffen. Against. I declare the motion to be carried. <coughs> Item 7. 
Council Tax Support Scheme. Item 7 is to consider the recommendations from the Executive on the Council Tax Support Scheme. Councillor Christopher Marlowe to make the recommendation. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This item has been subject to extensive scrutiny at both the ERC PDS Committee on two occasions and at the Executive, so I will keep my remarks mercifully brief. Considering the immense financial pressures under which we find ourselves, there is no area of the Council's responsibility that can be considered exempt from the requirement to find cost savings. This includes Council Tax Support, or CTS, which represents the largest discretionary welfare scheme operated by the Council. Even after the proposed reductions, the Council will still be spending almost £14 million on CTS in the coming financial year. We do recognise that some CTS recipients will find payment, even of the reduced amount, a struggle to meet. For this reason, we are simultaneously proposing an increase in the hardship fund to £225,000. After this was agreed, central government announced additional council tax support, which provides further mitigation next year. Lastly, members, in view of the changes we are making, the officers at my direction made two key changes to the public consultation. Firstly, a doubling in the number of households receiving a paper questionnaire and instituting checks to verify that online respondents were indeed residents of the borough. The result is that we have managed to more than triple the responses to this consultation. Perhaps those so opposed to the introduction of voter ID would do well to consider whether this has any lessons on that topic. The consultation responses showed that Bromley residents are cognizant of the financial challenges we are facing and a majority supported the three key aspects of the change. Members, I urge you not to second guess our residents, as I've already said, but instead support the proposal here before you. Um, Madam Mayor, I move the recommendation on page 113. Thank you. And the seconder is, please. I do so second and reserve my right to speak, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. It does appear that nobody actually wants to go home this evening. We have two amendments. Um, I would suggest we take them both at the same time. If the members are agreed. Should we circulate both of them at the same time and debate all of it at once? Agreed? Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, we will be starting again shortly. And I have a wonderful announcement for you all. No, there isn't free drink in the bar. No, the announcement is that we are going to now circulate all amendments for all things this evening. So there, there isn't an amendment on seven, by the way. That was, a, that was an error. Um, but there's an amendment on eight. There's an amendment on 10. There's an amendment on 11. There's an amendment on 12. Um, so we're going to circulate all of those now. So you've got the lot. OK? And then it's one speaky moment each. Otherwise, we really will be here until midnight. On each one, I mean. I mean, I don't mean all of them all at once. Yeah. Yeah. So if you need a comfort break, now's the time, and then we're going to get on with this. We're going to crack on. I'm losing my voice. It's probably a good thing. Right, how are we doing? Have we all got all the amendments for all of the points? And I'm losing the will to live. Are we all back in the room? Yeah. Has anybody got someone missing from next to them that should be there? No? We all here? Good, excellent. So, the good news is, I misled you, and there is no amendment on number seven. Okay, okay, um, so we've, we've had it proposed, we've had it seconded, I will open it for debate if you must. Okay, if not, if not, we will go to, to vote. Councillor Jill. Madam Mayor, thank you. Thank you. I will be brief and I apologise, there's a piece of paper on the, there's quite a few pieces of paper. Um, we will be opposing this item for the reasons we've already set out and which we've set out a number of times when this item has been discussed at executive resources and executive uh, we feel it's the wrong priority 
um, and it is uh, essentially the wrong wrong action for this council to be taking at a time when so many households are, are in real financial difficulty. Does anybody else wish to speak? Yes, Councillor Ireland. Um, the Lib Dems will be voting in favour of this. It's not something we do easily. Um, we'd like everybody to have maximum amount of um, uh, discount on council tax in these difficult times. But we've considered it carefully. Um, we've worked out that it affects only 10% of claimants in the largest properties. And we're comfortable that the increase in the discretionary support scheme should cover those who are most likely to be impacted. So for that reason, um, we feel it's fiscally prudent and we will support it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor McGregor, wish to speak? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say, um, I was delighted to see that... Sorry, sorry. Um, I was delighted to see the equality impact assessment on this item. Obviously, this has been through a few committees. I'm just very disappointed that while a number of inequalities have been highlighted affecting disadvantaged groups, it hasn't been quantified and there's no mitigation in there. So it, it, it seems like it's not really a full job. Um, and that's one of the many reasons we'd be voting against. There isn't anybody else. Excellent. We will go to the vote. Oh, Councillor Marlon. Big fun. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just to sum up very briefly, um, I think it's helpful, particularly for um, Councillor McGregor, to be aware that the hardship fund has been in existence for a number of years, um, and typically it has been underspent. Um, Councillor Igo, I don't know why you're shaking your hands. It's been underspent because people haven't made claims. Um, the, incre the increase that we, have, we are placing is conservative, but obviously it's something that I, as portfolio holder, will be monitoring very closely if the rate of claims is much higher than anticipated. So this is the right thing to do um, for the finances of the council, um, and the increase in the hardship fund is sufficient mitigation. Just one other point. Um, I'm glad um, that Councillor McGregor is pleased we've done the equality impact assessment, but more detailed answers would be extremely difficult to source because we simply don't hold that information, um, all that really detailed demographic information on council tax claimants. So if we wanted to go out and gather it, we'd have to spend more money that we could otherwise spend on council tax support. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I so move. I will now put this to the vote. Uh, those in favour? Please show. And those against? Thank you. I declare the recommendation to be carried. <coughs> okay, item eight is to consider the recommendations from the executive on the capital strategy. We have three amendments, but I believe we need Councillor Marlow to move, please. I'm trying to get this in the right order. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, this will be the shortest yet, you'll be relieved to hear. For many years, it has been Bromley's boast to be the only debt-free council in London. However, after months of painstaking analysis and exam the examination of alternatives, it has become clear to the administration that it is not possible to finance the capital programme without resorting to borrowing. To do so would expose the council to the real risk of depleting its reserves to a dangerous level. To reassure members, particularly on this side of the council, sceptical of this change, I must emphasise, as the leader has already said, that borrowing will only be approved for housing schemes and for housing schemes that will generate a saving to the council's revenue budget after interest costs. If you vote against this recommendation, you will be voting against the Council achieving further savings by additional reductions in the cost of temporary accommodation. I also reiterate that in the event that the Council has surplus resources at the end of future financial years, these will be put into a sinking fund to help offset the interest cost and ultimately finance repayment of the debt. Madam Mayor, I move the recommendation on page 187. Thank you. And who's... Seconding this? Madam Mayor, I do so second. And I would add, uh, in addition to Councillor Marlow, that you won't just be voting against it for financial reasons. You will be denying people in temporary accommodation 
housing sooner than they might otherwise get it if we follow these schemes. So that's why I second. Okay, that's it. We're now going to the First Amendment from Labour. Um, who's proposing this, please? Councillor I think it's Councillor Gill on there. Councillor Adams. Thank you. Right, Councillor Adams, you're proposing this. Um, we've already had an extensive conversation, so I'm going to make one simple point about this particular amendment with regard to uh, at the centre of this, um, a joint venture between the council and a partner where the council retains 51%. Um, we haven't assumed that that means 100% uh, control. We're fully aware that 51% ownership does not translate to 100% control. Um, but there's another point I want to clarify here, which is the joint venture partner does not have to be found before the acquisition. The council can make the acquisition and then subsequently sell a 49% stake to a partner, which addresses the point raised earlier um, that we haven't found and identified a partner yet, surprisingly. Okay, so that's everything. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And we have our... Does it need to be seconded? Councillor Jill. Councillor going to second that? I am. Madam Mayor, I believed we were having one speaker on each amendment, uh, but I second and reserve my right to speak so as not thank to prolong this. Yes, we, we'll, if we can carry that, that's great. Thank you. Carry on with that. And so, uh, from our Lib Dem colleagues, have we, who's proposing this? Councillor Ireland. Thank you. Um, we have already referred to this. Um, it's essentially um, to um, fi identify funds. Um, to help save the um, uh, community assets. Um, we are really looking for assistance from the council to help community groups purchase um, or in some way um, take control with a long lease. They need the repairs doing. Um, all the community groups that we've spoken to um, are amenable to the idea of providing funding for a degree, for a part of the building, perhaps as a purchase with half of it as a, um, a loan, um, but it does need council assistance for this. Um, and I'm told that this therefore would mean it would come have to come out of this, um, the capital budget, um, which is why we're proposing it separately to our main budget amendment. I hope that makes sense. Um, but the lack of food is making me gibber a little bit. Thank you. <coughs> we need a second, is that Councillor Ross? Yep. I, I so second and reserve my right to speak. Thank you. Thank you. But we're hoping that we're not going to have too many speaking bits. Thank you for everybody, not just you. And um, we have another amendment from Mrs. Hus Matters. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. If you're struggling to find our amendment, it was actually on, uh, on desk at the staff for a meeting rather than handed out halfway through. Maybe uh, people might want to know that. <laughs> Um, and also, uh, the other thing I'd flag up is we aren't actually asking for any more money uh, to be spent. We're actually asking for money to be reallocated. Um, this is in relation to Chislehurst Library, and many members will be aware of the recent history. Um, a series of abortive attempts uh, over the last 10 years uh, to develop the site have failed to get off the ground. Most recently, a collaboration with Prime uh, to build a new medical centre with a new library had to be shelved at the end of last year because the increase in inflation, building inflation is probably over 20% now, uh, meant the sum was no longer added up. Uh, and a decision was taken at the end of the last year that no further speculative proposals would be considered. Um, and then subsequent to that, a uh, sum of £1 million has been allocated to development of the library in the capital programme for the 2024-25 capital uh, tax year. Um, given lack of investment over the last decade because of the uncertainty, um, this, clearly, this is excellent news and we welcome it, um, my war colleagues and I. Uh, renovation is badly needed, uh, starting with disabled access so that people in wheelchairs and parents pushing buggies don't have to knock at the back door to be allowed in, which is the current situation. Um, we've had confirmation from the Chief Officer uh, that consultation on this development will start in May of this year. So what we're asking for is the money to be allocated from the 2024-25 capital programme to 2023-24, so that once the consultation is finished and work agreed, it can start straight away rather than have to wait for the start of the next fixed fiscal year. This may only be a matter of months, but given the delay in investment over the last 10 years, it would certainly be welcomed if the work could be expedited. I so move. Thank you. And um, Councillor Summers has 
Are you seconding this? Yes, I second it, madam. Thank you. Um, I now open this for debate. Well, that was quick. And that would back to Councillor Marla. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I have nothing to add to my earlier marks on the joint venture proposal. Um, as for the Chislehurst Matters Amendment, um, we in this chamber, we have a responsibility to, um, to provide services for the whole borough. If every ward followed the principle um, exhibited here and asked for works to be brought forward, we would have utter chaos in service delivery. Um, we have a programme of works stretching years into the future, not just in libraries, but in children's services, adult services and other areas. And so I'm afraid coming with a recommendation like this, um, if we operated as a general principle um, on this basis, then we, we would not be able to run the council. And I'm afraid that is a limitation, perhaps, of a group which takes such a, such a, a sectional interest. Um, so I urge members to re reject it. Thank you. We will now put the Labour amendment to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Thank you. That lost. We will now put the Lib Dem amendment to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That was lost. We will now put Chislehurst Matters amendment to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That has been lost. We will now go back to the substantive motion from the Conservative Party. Those in favour? Those against? That has won. Right, number nine. We don't have any amendments on number nine. Oh. Item nine is to consider the Treasury management to be proposed by Councillor Christopher Marlowe. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I do so move and have no further comments. It's to be seconded by Councillor Colin Smith. Madam Mayor, uh, I'm very happy to second and again have nothing to add. Thank you. I open the item for debate. Does anybody wish to speak? No. no? Oh, yes, we do. I just want to speak very briefly. Thank you, Madam. Mayor, um, just one one point at the top of this. The, you'll notice there's a, uh, a slightly complicated uh, point about the the bonds that the council can purchase um, or invest in, um, and I want to note the the collaborative way in which the uh, the Conservatives and Councillor Marlow um, engaged in a conversation in ERC following a, a Labour amendment um, to make sure that the uh, that the that the the bonds we're investing in are not going to be. Um, quite risky, a so-called triple B minus rating, which is which is um, on the cusp of, um, of of entering a territory called a sub investment grade. Um, so we, we did have a positive discussion, and what you see before you um, is is an amended version. Sorry, people are looking. Councillor Adams, I hoped what you were saying was correct, but if you turn to big page 209, it's A minus and triple B minus. So it triple appears B. what we agreed at the PDS has not been reflected. In, in the pack. Ah, that's not what I, I convinced us for. So are we saying that there's an error in the pack? I believe so, yeah. Madam Mayor. Madam oh, yes, that's... Um, Ma I was going to say, Madam Mayor, from the PDS, yes, Councillor Adams is absolutely correct. That is, should be a triple, uh, an A minus as well on bonds. I think we agree... This is going to sound really boring now. I think we agreed triple B plus, didn't we, Councillor Marlow? I agree, Councillor Adams, for both. Yes. And I've already made a decision to that effect, I believe. OK, we'll just make sure that the paperwork reflects the discussion that was had in that PTS meeting. Fantastic. And and there's we'll no corrected. disagreement between the no parties. No disagreement. It's just we need to make sure it's accurate in the paperwork. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. In that case, we go to the vote, because you have nothing further to add, you told me, indeed. So, those in favour, please show. Those against? 
Okay, that is carried. Thank you. Okay, we do have one amendment on item 10, but first of all, we need to go through the process. Item 10 is to consider recommendations from General Purposes and Licensing Committee on the Staff Pay Award. Councillor Christopher Marlowe, to move, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the, um, the executive's proposal on the pay award has already been made public and been shared with the people it most um, significantly affects, which is clearly um, council staff. So I will not um, continue ad infinitum on this. Um, simply to recap, Bromley opted out of national paying conditions over 10 years ago, which means that our staff get their pay rise from April, unlike almost all local authority staff in the country who have to wait for the extremely um, painstaking, time-consuming national award. Um, because we made an early award last year, we did so at two and a quarter percent, which was um, in line with similar awards. Um, however, um, inflation accelerated very significantly last year. Um, and so when the national award um, was agreed, um, it was more towards the 4% the mark, albeit it was done slightly differently to how Bromley does it. Um, we on this side of the chamber are very um, aware of this fact. Um, we've listened to our staff and why we will not engage in backdating pay um, because of the the principle that that undermines of having budgetary certainty, enabling us to run our finances prudently for the long term. We do feel that we do have sufficient financial flexibility in this coming year to add an extra 2% on top of what we were going to give for this year anyway. So the adjustment for last year, which will not be repaid retrospectively, to clarify, is 2%. And the core increase for this year is 5.75, which means that council staff from April onwards will receive an increase in their basic pay by 7.75%, um, which is significantly ahead of OBR inflation for this year of 5.5%. Um, the other point, Madam Mayor, is while we've toyed with increasing the merit pay awards from 200k, um, one year it's been 300, another 400, and we're proposing that this year onward we make it permanent as we think it's valuable that um, council managers have discretion to recognise high performance amongst Bromley council staff. So I um, move the recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Marlow. And to be seconded by Councillor Pauline Tunnicliffe, I believe. Sorry. Thank you. So we have an amendment coming from the Labour Party. And who's going to propose that? Councillor Whiffin. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. And the key point that we want to get across with this amendment is that we are continuing with merit pay. However, we are also ensuring that the lowest paid staff who work for us at this council are paid fairly. And at minimum, the amount calculated for a family to get by, according to the Independent Living Wage Foundation, not a phony socialist organisation, as Councillor Tickler suggested earlier on, although I did enjoy your droll comments. Um, we have heard a lot about the success of merit pay this evening. However, when we heard from staff directly at the local joint consultative committee, we also heard that many of them are opting to stay as agency staff here because of the paying conditions and that even some of them are opting out of our pension scheme. Therefore, we believe that to better reward the lowest paid staff at this council, we should ensure that as a bare minimum, we are making those salaries of staff moved in line with the London living wage. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the seconder is? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to formally second and reserve my right to speak. Thank you. I now open this for debate. Councillor Casey. Councillor Casey. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, we, the Liberal Democrats, are wholly in favour of the um, idea of Bromley becoming a living wage employer. Um, this would reflect the concern that this council rightly has for the high cost of living in the capital and give our employees and their families enough, not only for the essentials of life, but also enough for them to save. I think it right and proper that we align Bromley uh, with the best, uh, very best practices of other London boroughs and show our employees our commitment to always pay a fair 
London living wage. We wholeheartedly support the amendment. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak? No, thank you. Councillor Marlow, do you wish to sum up? Madam Mayor, I have nothing to add. So we'll go to the vote on the amendment first. Um, those in favour of the amendments, please show. And those against the amendment, please show. So the amendment is lost. Back to the substantive. Those in favour of the substantive original, please show. And those against, please show. Thank you. That is carried. Thank you. Number 11. Number 11? Yes, number 11, pay policy statements. Number 11 is to consider the pay policy statements. We do have one amendment from Labour, but we will go through the correct procedure. So, Councillor Marlowe, would you like to make a recommendation? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I so move. Councillor Pauline Tunnicliffe, would you like to second? We are now like the Labour Amendment. Who is going to propose that? Councillor King. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm happy to um, propose this amendment, um, um, calling on the introduction of the London Living Wage. Um, supporting the, our staff in this way will ensure staff do not suffer in um, the cost of living crisis that's affecting everyone, and it will make our borough an attractive place to work. Many boroughs in London already pay the London living wage across the political spectrum. We can afford this. The comment often made by our opponents is that we don't have to pay it. Well, that ignores the principles behind it. And there are many things in life that we do not have to do, but we do because they are the right thing to do. Um, and when it's just a few pence an hour, it seems a very odd political cause. Um, and we've heard Councillor Tickner's comments earlier that the London living wage is socialist. Um, I found this a really surprising and comment, given that some, some of the organisations that pay the London living wage, and these include banks, KPMG, um, and other um, financial uh, organisations. Um, maybe the, maybe Councillor Tickner and his colleagues are afraid that they're a few pence an hour away from being socialists. Thank you. And who will be seconding your amendment, please? Councillor Wiffitt, thank you. I now open this for debate. Who would like to speak? Oh, you do all want to go home. <laughs> OK, in that case, we will go for the vote on the Labour's amendments. Those in favour, please. Those against? The amendment has been lost. Back to substantive and original motion. Those in favour? And those against? That's been carried. Thank you. Item 12. Do we have an amendment on item 12? Yeah. We do. Is that the Labour amendment? Okay. So, item 12 is to consider the recommendation of the General Purposes and Licensing Committee on the Members' Allowance Scheme. This is to be moved by Councillor Tanakif, I believe. Indeed, Madam Mayor, thank you very much. First of all, I would like to thank Councillor Forthrock for his excellent research on Members' Allowances across London. I know it was extremely time-consuming. The object of this exercise was to make our allowance scheme fairer, especially for the chairman of pensions and audit to reflect the amount of work involved in their respective committees. Over the last 10 years, the members allowance budget has never overspent as a result of the Conservatives not increasing allowances for many years and from allowances not being taken up for various reasons. <coughs> All our special responsibility allowances are significantly less than those in Labour-controlled boroughs across London, 
demonstrating our continued prudence with residents' money. Following an interesting debate at General Purposes and Licensing last week, I'm happy to move the recommendation with one minor amendment to not remove the allowance for the leader of the second minority group. And would members all be aware, again, that they don't have to take their allowances if they do not wish so, or any considered increase? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. And this is to be seconded by Councillor Mike Bossy. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. We now have the Labour amendment. Who is going to propose that? Councillor McFarland, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I won't go through everything, but it is important to raise a few points. The Labour group is not opposed to an increase in allowances. However, we do feel that 7.5% is too high. We take issue with paying vice chairs an additional £2,150, which is more than one-sixth of the basic allowance paid to all members. Are we seriously saying that being a vice chair of a committee is an additional one-sixth work or responsibility? I'm pleased to hear the additional amendment made tonight um, about the third party allowance, and I very much welcome that. Much of the reasoning behind this seems to be to bring us in line with other London councils. Well, that's all well and good, but why then aren't we in line with other councils in paying all of our staff the London living wage, for example? Mm -hmm. Is it not true that we only like to bring ourselves in line with other London councils when the narrative of doing so is convenient as getting what the Conservative group want? Tonight's budget has failed to help many of the most vulnerable residents. That's why we propose to take the money saved from not bringing forward the Conservative group's proposals and allocate it to the council's welfare fund where it can help our most vulnerable residents. This is a very reasonable proposal and I urge all members to vote for it. Thank you. And who will be seconding that? Oh. One of you. Councillor Igo. Okay. Yes, thank you. I think she got there just before you. Right, lovely. Right, I now open this for debate. Councillor Falthrop, I believe you wish to speak. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam. I think I should clarify uh, one of the figures, and that is that uh, the third party allowance will be. Uh, five thousand and thirty pounds as of next year so that's just to make because i'm not sure if that figure's actually been circulated um but that that is the is the figure if you take account of the, the various increases and rounding off so i uh, just wanted to to make that clear and i just also wanted to uh, talk about a, a couple of things as well um if you go back through the history of the increases 2013 zero percent increase 2014 zero percent increase 2015 zero percent increase 2016 zero percent increase 2017 zero percent increase 2018 zero percent increase 2019 guess what zero percent increase and then you get to 2020 and 2021 two and a half percent increase and a 0% increase last year in 2022. So, yes, of course, of course I could. I know, I know you love listening to me. I, I know you love listening to me. And I'm more than happy to do an encore because I know you want that. Um, so don't, don't you worry about that. There's plenty more facts and figures coming. So on average, if you take this year's increase into account, over the last 11 years, it's been an average of 1.15% increase over over this over of members allowances now uh, uh, councillor mcpartland said oh you put up your allowances and all the rest of it but actually we're comparing them with <coughs> last year's allowances so we don't know what the labor party are going to increase theirs in all their boroughs that they control or the liberal democrats and Sutton and such like we're just comparing with last year's allowances so it's bringing us into line and probably still behind, if truth, truth be known. So actually, you know, this is not about sort of money grabbing. Also, some of the extra allowances, because we do not allow duplicate allowances, so therefore there's actually going to be no extra, there'll be actually extra money within the budget because there will be people with two places. So for example, I'm chairman of VRC and currently vice chairman of environment, so I would only get one allowance. And that is a, a typical example of how, how this, that will work. 
So anyhow, uh, Madam Mayor, I just wanted to point that out. And uh, obviously I'll be supporting the amendment from Councillor Tunnicliffe. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Gio, I, I, I believe I can't even speak. I believe you wish to speak. Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. I will be brief. Um, and I thank Councillor Paul for his work on this. And I certainly acknowledge the huge, immense amount of work that he does speaking in council meetings. I'm sure some of his colleagues <laughs> might have a different view. Um, briefly, just to, to respond to some points that were made at the General Purposes and Licensing Committee and, and also add to what Councillor McPartland was saying, we do absolutely agree with the proposed rise uh, for the chairs of the Audit Risk Committee and the Pensions Committee to reflect that those are no longer subcommittees and there's a substantial amount of work involved. Now, I do take Councillor Porthot's point about uh, many members opposite are doing two jobs and not getting paid for them. Um, now, I will make two points. The first, if, if they feel that the workload is too much for them, there are members on this side of the chamber who would be happy uh, to help out and take up some of those positions for them. And the second is, um, if they feel like their pay and conditions aren't, uh, aren't the, the level that they expect, then uh, we can introduce them to, to some unions that can help them on that one. <laughs> they might turn into socialists. So, oh, yes, and there we are, Councillor Kennedy Brooks, absolutely. Don't worry, we're not worried about you guys turning into socialists. <laughs> Lovely. Um, Councillor Weber? Thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just very briefly, I think it, it's, I think on behalf of my colleagues, I, I would uh, welcome the, the change in tack from the, from the committee discussion we had at uh, General Purposes and Licensing just over a week ago. We, we had a very spirited debate. Um, clearly, I, I didn't want to be debating member allowances for as long as, as long as it went on in that discussion, but I think it was widely uh, acknowledged that the abolition of something we've been paying for over 20 years to such a wide range of opposition parties, and it's only recently coincidentally been, been us. Uh, it, it's previously gone to a wide range of, of Labour, UKIP and other independents. Um, very grateful for, for the U-turn, very grateful that the, um, uh, the, the members opposite in the administration uh, and the chairman of general purposes and licensing have, have sort of thought again as was hinted in that in that meeting. We we've obviously do have uh, criticisms of some of the increases, but I think I would rather focus uh, our attention on the rest of the meeting and obviously we are um, uh, very, very grateful indeed that, that this this consideration has been taken into account, and I think the the, the threat of removing something uh, in, in such a personal way, we, we feel anyway, was um, we're, we're glad the council's thought again. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Thank you. I believe Councillor Casey wishes to speak. Uh, yes, I just wanted to reiterate my uh, my colleague's comments. I, I think it uh, was a very smart move to for the uh, U-turn on that particular decision, and also uh, very prescient and uh, forward thinking of uh, the, the party over there for the time when they will be the second largest opposition party <laughs> in the capital. So, you know, bravo, bravo. Thank you. Oh, Councillor Owen. I'm sure there are people elsewhere, Madam Mayor, that would admire Councillor Tunnicliffe of being so able in dealing with the problems of Ireland. Uh, I would just say um, I've looked at Liberal Democrat councillors and they are not uh, as generous, so they're two faced as usual. Councillor Owen. Right. Um, I think we will now take this to the vote. Uh, we're going to the Labour amendment. Um, those in favour of the Labour amendment. Thank you. Those against the Labour amendment. Thank you. The amendment is lost. Back to the substantive. Those in favour of the original amendment, of the original motion. So I'm getting there. Thank you. And those against the original motion. Thank you. The original um, is carried. Thank you very much. Item 13. We don't have any amendments on item 13. Just thought it'd be a bit of good news for everybody. Um, item 13 is to receive the annual report for 2021-22 for the Standing Advisory Council on Religious Education. That is to be proposed by Councillor David Jeffries. Thank you, Adam Mayor. I'll be extremely brief on this. This is the annual report for academic year 21-22. I think the report speaks for itself. Uh, just in proposing this to the Council, could I highlight the work of this committee in the sense not only does it look after religious education, but I think it actually promotes community understanding and cohesion in our borough. 
And in doing so, can I just highlight the great work we get and the enthusiasm from our teachers from across the religious faiths in our borough, and in particular from Roger Bristow, the Reverend Roger Bristow, who is the chairman. Not only has he put a lot of work in in chairing that committee, but he also represents Bromley at the National Sacre and puts a huge amount of work into this, as he will on Wednesday. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Robert Evans to second us. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm happy to second, and I certainly don't intend to speak. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Evans. This item is now open for debate. Does anybody wish to say anything about this item? No. Marvellous. Um, I now put the motion to the vote. Those in favour, please show. <coughs> Lovely. And those against? It's a note. That's carried. It's carried. Thank you very much. It's to be noted. I see what you mean. Yes, thank you. Item 14, West Wickham Library and Housing Projects, update and award of works contract. Item 14 is to consider the recommendation for the executive on the West Wickham Library and Housing Project. Please note that there is further information in part two of our agenda, which should not be discussed in part one, because we are still live. I'm sure everyone's gripped, and that they've gripped to this meeting. Um, but anyway, we are still live. So I would ask Councillor Yvonne Baer, for your to move your recommendations, please. I'll make this exceedingly brief. It, this report more or less speaks for itself. It's going to uh, give a new library to mm. West Wickham. It's going to give them some really great affordable housing to go alongside it. And there's a bit of an enabling development to make all this possible. I move this uh, that the recommendations are approved as stated here to give these excellent new facilities to West Wickham. Thank you. And this is to be seconded by Councillor Tony Owen, I believe. I second. Thank you. I now open this for debate. Would anybody like to speak? Councillor Brock. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm sure I speak on behalf of all my wall colleagues that we uh, welcome this recommendation. Indeed, I'm sure you do. <laughs> Would anybody else like to speak? No? Okay, lovely. So, I'll put this motion, I presume, would you like to, no. Um, I will now put the motion to the vote. Those in favour? Was this unanimous? Yep. Fantastic. Those against? Not even a sneaky one out there. Lovely. Fantastic. Thank you very much. The recommendation to be carried. So, item 15, motions. We have two motions tonight. The first motion is from Cathy Bass, and it's comments made by Councillor Slater. Would you like to move your motion? Yes, Madam Mayor. So, the Labour Group motion is calling out misogyny. Um, we have put this motion forward because the Labour Group want to ensure that there is a penalty for such bad behaviour and that we in this chamber are all in agreement that those comments made by Councillor Slater do not reflect the views of this council. We accept that the investigation found that the Councillor's Code of Conduct was not engaged, so there was no standards committee investigation. However, the investigators said that they were agonised about their conclusion. The Labour Group share the investigators' views and are disappointed by the fact that until today, and even maybe today, he remains uncensored. We must have, if the, if the Standards Committee could not have taken action, we must have a foul safe policy in place to ensure that councillors who behave so appallingly will be held to account. We have an alleged rape victim, an alleged victim who was, who councillor Slater implied is a prostitute, and we have an alleged rapist whom councillor Slater refers to as a punter. That's misogyny. His comment also diminishes the seriousness of rape. 
councillors' comments were damaging because this government pledged to improve rape prosecution and conviction rate conviction rates. And rape is violence. Victims of violence and they report a crime that they will be heard and supported wherever possible. And we know that sex workers are included in the Bromley Safer Strategy, the Safer Bromley Strategy, VARG. Um, the conduct of individual councillors reflects the, com the reputation of us all, whatever our political party. So I hope that every councillor in this chamber was embarrassed and, and disappointed at Councillor Slater's behaviour. At present, on the LBB website, under councillor's details, Councillor Slater is listed as an independent. And the Labour group approved of that move, um, but his former colleagues in the Conservative Party were still holding joint surgeries with him. Um, and I accept that now today he's not sitting with the Conservative Party, but the views of where he sits today is still unclear. So we'd like to know firstly for the Conservatives to make their position clear and to condone his terrible behaviour and comments. <laughs> now, Councillor Slater had the opportunity of apologising at the time, but instead he deflected the news report by laying blame and criticising others. He issued a statement that said, local Labour councillors the Labour MP and the Mayor of London ignored my warnings. Well, I'm not sure what warnings he asked the Labour part to address, but did he not challenge the three local Conservative MPs and Bromley Conservative councillors who are in administration and so had the power to make and fund the changes that he was asking for? I accept that tonight he gave a, an apology and everyone must accept an apology when it's given. I hope that it's heartfelt and I hope that he shares that with the victim and her families. We're ready to forgive, but we'd like to know what the position is of the Conservative Party. Thank you. And I do accept your apology. This motion now needs to be second. Seconded is Councillor Deal. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just to clarify one point, I think Councillor Vance was meaning to say whether the Conservative group condoned his comments, not, not asking them to condone Sorry. his comments, to be clear. Thank you. Um, Madam Mayor, I second this motion and I start by thanking Councillor Slater for his apology this evening, uh, which I will absolutely accept is sincere and accept that he did not intend to cause offence. Um, however, unfortunately, his, and I'm apologising to have to say this, but his vile and abhorrent remarks have caused huge offence to many residents and particularly women across this borough. And given his responsibility as an elected official in upholding the council's strategies, including the violence against women and girls strategy, such comments we feel cannot go without uh, without condemnation. And so our motion this evening is asking members on all sides to condemn his comments and to consider that they are unacceptable for a councillor of this council to have made. I hope that Councillor Slater feels that he can support this motion on the basis that his apology accepts that his comments are unacceptable. And I certainly hope that colleagues from all parties feel that they are equally able to accept this motion on the basis that they agree with us and agree that councils have to be councils need to be held to a standard of behaviour, and that in this case, Councillor Slater's remarks fell short of the standard that's required. Now, we acknowledge, as Councillor Vance has said, that there is no standards investigation. However, it is is very much the legal framework that councillors sit under. We, as members of this chamber, who are accountable to our residents are obviously able to express our view politically in this form in a motion. And we hope that this is not a partisan motion and not taken as such, that it is taken, it is expressed in good faith and the anger that we felt 
on seeing these comments. And we hope that by voting for this motion this evening, we can draw a line under it and make clear that across the council, we do not regard these comments as acceptable and have said so formally and publicly so that our residents are clear where we all stand. Thank you. The motion is now open for debate and Councillor Ireland wishes to speak. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I would like to acknowledge the apology. I feel that it was a fulsome apology from Councillor Slater, but nonetheless, um, his comments were shocking. Um, I feel particularly for women and girls that live in the Bromley Borough. Only 15% of sexual assault victims ever report their crime. Um, this just deters more if they think that the people that they vote for um, receive no sanction. I think it brings us all into disrepute, the fact that the council have so far been unable to sanction him. And I would also appreciate some clarity from the Conservatives about Councillor Slater's role. I mean, we saw that he chaired the selection committee for Bob Neill um, at the weekend. Um, and I, you know, that clearly to me indicates that he's still very much in the Conservative Party and acting as a Conservative, not as an independent. So I'd like some clarity on that, please. Thank you. Do any other members wish to speak? Councillor Fulthrop. Uh, thank you, Madam. Madam, I'll be, I'll be very, very brief. Um, there's an aspect of uh, jurisprudence uh, which is sort of quite interesting. If someone admits to their mistakes and um, shows contrition, then any punishment can be mitigated or reduced. Um, in a judicial system, um, it would take into this into account the uh, Christian doctrine of forgiveness, which Councillor Bance has talked about being prepared to forgive. And I don't know, and I don't think anybody in this council chamber actually know the facts behind the various <coughs> elements within that news article. Um, so trying to speculate whichever way I think is it's always difficult uh, as to, to exactly what the events were that took place. Obviously a news article is not a court of law and I have to say that I have listened to what Councillor Slater has to say and I think members should take heart uh, that he has apologised and actually I have to say that before tonight he had already written to me to apologise to apologize personally, uh, demonstrating his contrition. Perhaps only an uncaring, hard-nosed, illiberal person would not be prepared to take that into account. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Smith. You wish to speak? Yes, Madam Mayor, I do wish to speak and I wish to move an amendment uh, on this motion. Um, Madam Mayor, I, I can only but endorse the thoughts and views of colleagues opposite, including Big and Hill Matters on, or whatever it is on this occasion. Um, <laughs> all colleagues opposite. Uh, um, so, so um, Madam Mayor, this is a serious matter, so let's get back to serious. Um, we do very, very broadly support the motion. Um, you will have seen the motion circulated earlier. Um, we've retained paragraphs one and four, uh, and we've added a third paragraph that hopefully has gone some way to show what the local conservative group at Bromley Council think of Councillor Sater's comments and what we have done, uh, what we have done in terms of correcting what was clearly a very, very stupid comment. Um, a, a, a thoroughly thoughtless comment and the, the sort of thing that happens when people have brain freezes for a moment. It's beyond the pal. To his credit, he has apologised. And I think that's absolutely right. That was one of the conditions I've laid down for Sean's potential rehabilitation in this group. Um, Sean also needs to undertake certain trainings um, 
to evidence to me that he has fully learned his lesson and he has fully paid that price. So, Madam Mayor, I do move the amendment. Uh, I would encourage colleagues to vote for it. I think we all agree um, a wrong was done. And I think his very magnanimous and humble apology tonight uh, ought to be cited, suffice for all but the most hard-hearted of individuals. Uh, and in answer, direct answer to Councillor Ireland's question, uh, Sean's position within the party is that he remains a Conservative member and has done throughout, but that he has been suspended from the Conservative group on Bromley uh, because we felt local sanction was the correct way to take this forward. I so move, Madam Mayor. Thank you. That amendment needs to be seconded. Who's going to second it? Councillor Tickner. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I do second it. And uh, first of all, clearly confirm that we do not condone Councillor Slater's comments in any way. Uh, while Councillor Slater's comments on social media have concerned us all, I do think our response needs to be proportionate towards a newly elected member who committed <clears throat> in a personal capacity, not as a councillor, um, <coughs> this comment on a serious issue. Uh, which incidentally happened outside the borough of Bromley. And I think uh, a similar error uh, could happen, could have happened to any members here and might and yet might yet happen to members. It's very easy to make mistakes on social media and uh, we all have to remember we've been elevated to the position of councillor and so even in a personal capacity, we have to be very careful on social media and those things do happen. Now, uh, Councillor Slater has apologised this evening to the full council. We've heard this. Uh, he's attending a course on the correct use of social media <clears throat> and he remains suspended from the Conservative group. I second the amendment. Thank you. We will now debate the amendment which is made by Councillor Smith and seconded by Councillor Tickner. I just want to make sure everybody has got sight of it. Do we have any more copies, please? If we could pass copies over. Can't debate it because I can't see it. Uh, Madam Mayor, just for reference, Mr. Walton was given 65 copies at the uh, commencement of the meeting. Are we discussing a point of order? Are we discussing a point of order? Uh, no. Okay. Yet. Councillor Igo, I believe you wish to speak. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I disagree with Councillor Tickner, I'm afraid. I also disagree with the comments from the leader that these were stupid comments and it was brain freeze. They're extremely serious, and I'm extremely disappointed myself to see no uh, woman councillor from the other side standing and proposing or seconding your amendment or even standing to discuss it. Um, perhaps you will after I have spoken. Um, my question has to be, I'm afraid, yes, it was an apology, but it was an apology after we had tabled the motion, which has been in the agenda for a week. And also, it's 59 days after the event. It was the 31st of December when the comment was made uh, on your Twitter account, and it's taken you 59 days to apologise. I find that incredible, and I'm curious as to why it took so long. Thank you. Madam Mayor, point of order, two points of order. The reason I am presenting this motion is I am the leader of this council, and I believe in leading from the front on important matters. The reason Councillor Tickner seconded it is he is the group whip and he has been involved in the disciplinary process with me throughout. 
Um, and to the second point, Madam Mayor, the reason Councillor Slater is apologising here in person tonight is at my insistence that he comes before council and atones in person for the folly, for the stupid, for the irresponsible comments that he made. So that's the answer to those two direct questions. Thank you. Councillor Casey wishes to speak. Yes, thank you. I'm afraid I can't um, support this amendment at all, not least because of some of the comments that uh, Councillor Igo has been saying. It's been far too long before this apology has been brought before Council. It's far too long before this apology has been made. It's ridiculous that it has to be done on the insistence of the leader to have him brought before here to apologise before everyone. Then as part of your amendment, he's going to remain suspended from the group until he attends full council to make an unreserved apology for his actions. So presumably after tonight, he's back in the group. Madam Mayor, point of order, I don't think Councillor Case has read the uh, amendment. That's why I'm saying that. Uh, it actually it. states, and also attend appropriate training or voluntary work as deemed appropriate by the administration. So not just turning up tonight and apologising. No, that's not what it says. The other things that I'm also quite disappointed about are the comments of Councillor Forthrop saying that we don't know the circumstances of the story or what they were saying in the paper. Not the point. Absolutely not the point. The comment should not have been made at all under any circumstance. And I'm shocked that people are trying to make excuses for it, talk around it, because all I am hearing is but. Nothing but but. It's inexcusable. I appreciate Councillor Slater's apology tonight, and I do believe that it was meant wholeheartedly, but I'm very disappointed at what I've heard otherwise. Councillor Geel. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And I, I'd like to start by, by not wanting to disagree with my colleagues or anything else that's been said, but to thank the council leader for the comments that he's made, which I do take to be in good faith and I do take to be a reflection of the seriousness which he has uh, taken this issue. Um, unfortunately, um, I, and I have to say, my, and I think this is probably one where different members of the group would have voted differently, had it been just Councillor Smith's comments and even perhaps just Councillor Forthrop's comments, I think we would have considered mm -hmm. uh, voting for this amendment, um, uh, despite the fact that it removes reference to the council considering the comments to be misogynistic, which we in this group absolutely uh, consider to be the case. However, I'm afraid, given Councillor Tickner's comments, which cannot be considered to be anything other than seeking to excuse the behaviour and the comments, and a number of excuses were made, and, and completely bluntly, if it was a newly elected member of this group, I would not be using that as an excuse. If it was something that had happened in Conservative Bexley or Labour Lewisham, I would not be using that as an excuse. And, and frankly, I am shocked that Councillor Tickner, as the group whip, has come to this meeting and pr spoken, giving reasons to excuse the behaviour. And I'm, I'm, I can't see any other uh, justification um, other than he does not agree that these are unequivocally unacceptable comments. Um, and so for that reason, this group will be voting against the amendment, which I'm sure will pass. But I will ask Conservative members, we will be asking for a conserv uh, recorded vote on the main motion. And I hope that at least everyone in this council agreeing that the council condemns the comments unequivocally will at least be assigned to residents, even with your amendment um, of the seriousness that we all do take on this, even though, um, as I say, your amendment, we feel or I feel is is not necessarily coming. While it might have been coming from a good place, Councillor Tickner's comments have made it impossible for us to accept it. I believe Councillor Marlowe, you wish to speak? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just personally speaking, I would like to criticise the comments of Councillor Igo for criticising us for not having um, a female councillor speaking on this topic as being inherently sexist. I don't see how you can look at the cabinet facing you and say that women don't play a leading role in the Bromley Conservative Group and in this administration and in this council. Councillor Bainbridge. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I wouldn't have chosen tonight to address you for the very first time, but I did want to respond to your comments, Councillor Igo. I too was incredibly disappointed by Councillor Slater's comments. I don't condone his comments. I'm not going to make any excuses for his comments. They're not something I'm aligned with at all. 
I've personally discussed his comments with him at length, and I really do believe they I, they're wholeheartedly. He believes them. He's he's really really sorry, and he I, I'm just not offering any excuses for them. But I do believe, as you've alluded to, that we should forgive. We should draw a line underneath it, and that's why I will support our motion. But I do completely agree this is unacceptable for a member to speak in this way. And I speak as a councillor, as a colleague, but also as a young woman in Bromley. Councillor Melanie Stevens. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I've listened to this with great interest um, and just would like to clarify a couple of things. We've talked of forgiveness um, for a mistake being made. We've talked about apology, we talked about punishment. We all agree that if somebody makes a mistake, accepts that mistake, accepts their punishment and moves on and rehabilitates, that should allow that person to continue unblemished and with their life. Thank you. Right, does anyone else wish to speak before we vote on the amendment? Okay, we are now going to take the vote on the amendment. We would like to call for a recorded vote on amendment. Five people. Not on the amendment, on that. Yeah, but no, but then it will come to the statute. Yeah, but it will come to the statute yeah. motion, then you won't yes, get vote. Exactly. Okay. Okay. I don't know which five you want to. I'm sure, she'll find five. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Madam so. Mayor. Um, members, would you please indicate how you wish to vote on this amendment, Councillor Adams? On the amendment. Against. Voting on the amendment, okay, just to be clear. Councillor Andrews. So we've got a point of order. Madam Mayor, before we start, as chairman of the Standards Committee, you understand that I'm in a difficult position. I will abstain on the votes because I think it right that the chairman remains neutral in this matter. Thank you, Councillor Bennett. Right. Okay, I'll call uh, the names again from the beginning. Councillor Adams? Councillor Andrews? For. Councillor Ann Arnold? Against. Councillor Bainbridge? For. Councillor Bans? Against. Councillor Baer? For. Councillor Bennett? For. Councillor Kim Botting? For. Councillor Mike Botting? For. Councillor Brock? For. Councillor Cartwright? For. Councillor Casey? Against. Councillor Connolly? Against. Councillor Cuthbert? For. Councillor Dean? For. Councillor Dunbar? Against. Councillor Evans? For. Councillor Forthrup? For. Councillor Gabbett? For. Councillor Grant? For. Councillor Gray? Abstain. Councillor Gupta? For. Councillor Harris? For. Councillor Igo? Against. Councillor Ireland? Against. Councillor Jack? For. Councillor Jeel? Yes. Councillor Jeffries? For. Councillor Joel? For. Councillor Kennedy Brooks? Against. Councillor King? Against. Councillor Laidlaw? For. Councillor Lee? Four. Councillor Lima, Four. Councillor Marlow, Councillor McGregor, Against. Councillor McPartland, Against. Councillor Michael, Four. Councillor Onslow, Four. Councillor Owen, Four. Councillor Page, Four. Councillor Price, Against. Councillor Ross, Against. Councillor Rowlands, Four. Councillor Slater, Four. Councillor Smith, Cullen Smith, Four. Councillor Diane Smith, Four. Councillor Mark Smith, Four. Councillor Stammers, Councillor Stevens. Abstain. Councillor Stranger. Four. Councillor Thompson. Against. Councillor Tickner. Four. Councillor Tannicliffe. Four. Councillor Tarrell. Four. Councillor Weber. Abstain. Councillor Whiffin. The amendment has been carried. You want to vote on a substantive motion, yes. even though the amendment has just passed. Yes, happy to okay. Can you need to stand up, please, five of you. Okay, we're going to do a recorded vote on the substantive motion. As amended. As amended. 
<coughs> Members, would you please indicate how you wish to vote on the a substantive motion as amended? Madam Councillor Mayor, Adams? Uh, Madam Moore. Yeah. Pardon, it's not substantive, it's uh, on the amended version. Which is substantive now? Substantive motion is forward. Yeah. So it's on the amended motion. We've done the amended. No, 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 the amendment has been carried, therefore, therefore the substantive motion falls. No, 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 no. It becomes the substantive motion. So the amended was carried, therefore it becomes the substantive motion. So there isn't really a need to vote again because you've already done it. We're not voting on your motion. Because it's because it's been amended. Because it's been amended, it's now the substantive motion. But you've already had that. We've already done that. Tasnem, you need to rule on this one, please. Okay. Members, the the amendment has been carried, so the substantive motion is changed by the amendment. So that needs to be voted on, which obviously. We always vote on the amendment, and the amendment has an effect on the substantive motion, whether it changes it or leaves it the same. You always vote on the substantive motion as amended or not. Yeah, in this case, as amended. Okay, so we're now going to vote on what has become the substantive motion, which is the amended yeah, motion. Yeah. As in, we're going to vote for exactly the same thing again. It's going to be exactly the same again. And everyone's going to vote for exactly the same way. That's what we will do. That is what we've always done. Um, yeah. So, members, please, would you indicate how you wish to vote? Madam Mayor, could I be of assistance to everybody, um, including the Labour group? What has happened is that the Labour group moved a motion, the Conservative group moved an amendment, which was passed. We're now voting on the amended motion, which still uh, is critical of Councillor Slater. Uh, as Chairman of the Standards Committee, I will now vote for that motion, and I'm sure my Vice Chairman Councillor Stevens will probably do as well, because we're now voting on the main motion as amended. Members, may I have your attention, please? Please, would you indicate how you wish to vote? Sorry. Councillor Adams. Against. Councillor Andrews. For. Councillor Arnold. Against. Councillor Bainbridge. For. Councillor Bance. Against. Councillor Baer. For. Councillor Bennett. For. Councillor Kim Botting. Four. Councillor Mike Botting. Four. Councillor Mark Brock. Four. Councillor Cartwright. Four. Councillor Casey. Yes. Councillor Connolly. Councillor Cuthbert. Four. Councillor Dean. Four. Councillor Dunbar. Again. Councillor Evans. Four. Councillor Forthrop. Four. Councillor Gabbert. Councillor Grant. Four. Councillor Gray. Councillor Gupta. Four. Councillor Harris. Four. Councillor Igo. Okay. Councillor Arland. Okay. Councillor Jack. Four. Councillor Jeel. Yes. Councillor Jeffries. Four. Councillor Joel. Four. Councillor Kennedy Brooks. Yes. Councillor King. Yes. Councillor Laidlaw. Four. Councillor Lee. Four. Councillor Lima. Four. Councillor Marlow. Four. Councillor McGregor. Yes. Councillor McPartland. Yes. Councillor Michael. Four. Councillor Onslow. Four. Councillor Owen. Four. Councillor Page. Four. Councillor Price. Yes. Councillor Ross. Four. Councillor Rowlands. Four. Councillor Slater. Four. Councillor Smith, Dark Colin Smith, Councillor Diane Smith, Councillor Mark Smith, Councillor Stammers, Councillor Stevens, Councillor Stranger, Councillor Thompson, Councillor Tickner, Councillor Tannercliffe, Councillor Tarrell, Councillor Weber, Councillor Whiffen. That's carried. So, 
So we now move on to the next motion, which I believe has an alteration yep, exactly. from what is in the blue book. So the second motion concerns the proposed extension of the ULES. Please refer to the paper copy uh, table today with an additional wording at the end rather than the version in the blue book. Councillor Nicholas Bennett to move, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I didn't appreciate that I was going to be speaking at half past 11 at night uh, on this motion. Uh, the motion uh, is in, follows on from the motion that was passed to this council on July the 25th, 2022. I won't repeat in detail what was said in that very good debate uh, because the reasons are set out at the back of this motion as to why with four other authorities we've applied for a judicial review. Councillor Cuthbert will deal with the inaccurate and misleading information from the area of London about Bromley's air quality. <coughs> she will also outline what we are doing to improve our environment and reduce pollution. I want to concentrate on the outrageous behaviour of the Mayor of London. Madam Mayor, I pay tribute to Peter Fortune, who is our local assembly member, for the forensic work he's done and for the 200 pages which he got through a Freedom of Information Act request, which shows that the mayor lied to the London Assembly. Very clearly, and I say that, he was dishonest and he lied to the London Assembly. And what has been, become very clear when one looks at what the mayor said, he denied on six occasions that the newly released documents, which now show that he knew what was going on and he was manipulating the consultation. Seb Dance, the Deputy Mayor for Transport, also made false and dishonest statements to the London Assembly when he denied on three occasions receiving ULES consultation results in advance. In fact, the documents reveal that he and Shirley Rodriguez, Deputy Mayor for the Environment, received weekly updates on the results along with the Mayor's senior advisors. And it's very clear from that that not only are they receiving senior, uh, updates every week, they were concerned about the way the vote was going. And so for £165,000, the mayor, or through his uh, deputies, organised a marketing agency to try and target those they thought were most in favour of voting yes in the consultation. And it's very interesting when you see uh, the documents that are now being re revealed, TfL restricted, I may say, July 2022, we invested a further 165,000 in promoting the consultation to the 35 and under age group via digital marketing, digital audio channels and social marketing. Our new social media marketing campaign commenced on the 4th of July with Snapchat. Similar advertising on Instagram was due to start on the 18th of July. And what did they get for the 165,000, Madam Mayor? a 1%, less than 1% increase in responses from the under 35 age group. And even worse for them, and for the mayor, the consultation responses from the under 30 age group show 29% thought it should, the ULS should come in earlier, 9% thought it was the right date, 5% should it should be later, and 55% of under 30 said it should not be implemented at all. So even the group with the mayor thought was going to vote yes when they did the social marketing were not in favour of bringing in ULES. The mayor then had YouGov do an opinion poll to track how the vote was going. And if that wasn't enough, when they got the final results, they then disallowed 5,000 votes which had been put forward by both sides. 400 from the yeses and 4,500 from the noes. Of course, after all that, it only brought down the no's from 61% to 59%. So very clearly, when the public were consulted, 59% said no to ULIS. And of course, the mayor has ignored that and is now intent on bringing in uh, the zone into Bromley. What we have is a zone one solution being imposed on the outer London boroughs. And it really is absurd to think that all that money has been spent and just in order to ignore public opinion. 
Madam Mayor, what could we do with the 160 million it's going to cost to put the signs in and the cameras and the 110 million pound scrappage scene? Well, for 8.75 million, which would be our share of that money, we could repair all the principal roads in this borough. Because in the last five years, we have had only 280,000 pounds for all the borough's main roads. 200 went to Crofton Road for my colleague, Councillor Marlowe's ward, and 80 pounds went to Biggin Hill. We could repair the Widmore Road. We could repair the roads in Beckenham if the mayor gave us that money. And if we had that money, we would not only improve uh, the quality of the ride on cars, which of course causes pollution, we would lessen congestion and would actually make the, the air cleaner. So Madam Mayor, it's very clear to us that this money is being wasted on a failed scheme. It's a socially regressive, unfair tax, which penalises those on fixed incomes. And just as importantly, and I was talking to a chap who you know, who was repairing my house, and he said, I have a 2009 pickup truck as a painter, decorator, builder and plumber. I can't afford £60,000 to replace it. It's a perfectly good truck. I will have to put that £12.50 a day on all my customers' bills. £4,000 plus a year he'll be adding to the bills of his customers. And that's the impact. And lastly, if I could just say, what's also unfair is the mayor did not consult the counties that surround London. Because many of the residents in Kent and in Surrey who have joined us in this uh, JR proceedings, they've had no cons consultation at all. And yet people like nurses, like supermarket shelf fillers who live just over the border in Tandridge or in Swanley will be penalised and they've had no say. They won't even get a, a cut of the scra scrappage scheme. And the scrappage scheme itself, 110 million divided between 33 authorities, including the City of London. Frankly, the figures are nonsense. If you have a pickup truck like my friend's got, you get £5,000 at the maximum. If you've got a motorbike, it's £1,000. If you've got a car, £2,000. Where everybody knows what the cost of a new car is, or even a second-hand one which complies. This scrappage scheme is only scratching the surface. And Madam Mayor, I'm happy, therefore, to move this motion and let us show that we support the leader of the council and the other authorities who are taking the mayor uh, to court. Thank you. I need to uh, ask for someone to second this motion, please. So, Councillor Cuthbert. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And yes, I would like to second Councillor Bennett's motion and I will make my comments brief. Um, I have to say that the ULA's argument in context of improving air quality is very disingenuous disingenuous indeed. If this was truly about improving air quality in outer boroughs, the mayor would have agreed and accepted the 500 million pound budget proposal by City Hall Conservatives to bring um, the fully zero emission bus fleet and deliver it by 2030, which is four years earlier than his original target. Um, but this is about choices. Instead, the mayor is investing um, money into the cameras, which will put, as Councillor Bennett said, um, across Outer London, which will hurt some of the poorest in our community, small business owners and key workers like carers that we rely on as a society. And in contrast, us here in the London Borough of Bromley, we are using our partnerships across the borough, including with our key contractors and our council reserves to make our environment even better. So just a few examples, a million pound park jubilee fund, we are investing on our water bodies across the borough we are um, doing, delivering our nature-friendly verge pilot, which will help biodiversity. We are planting new woodlands and investing one million pounds additional into street trees. We're creating new EV charges that my friend, um, Councillor uh, Forthrop, is so keen on. And we are doing a pilot about um, off-street parking um, for residents who, who would like to have an electric vehicle but don't have off-street parking. Of course, we are also investing in new LED street lighting across the road. This is going to a long way to reduce our emissions, but also will help Bromley taxpayers. Um, and because the mayor is so keen to talk about the bad air quality in Bromley, I do want to talk just a few facts here, because this debate should be based on facts and not fiction from the mayor. The first point is that our air quality in Bromley is good, and it is improving year on year. 
Bromley saw a 23% decline in the annual NO2 concentration in the borough. And our hope is this will only get better when the people who can afford it, that's key, to change to EV or to change to electric vehicles will do so. And the technology continues to improve. We had a 19% decline in the annual average PM 2.5. This means that we are within the previous World Health Organization interim recommendation limits. And we had a 28% decline in the annual average PM10 concentration. But I do welcome the cross-party concern from Labour, the Lib Dems, and Conservative councils and MPs across London. And I can only hope the Mayor listens to us and invests this money in making his buses cleaner and improving public transport in outer London for the people that can least afford it. And thank you, Madam Mayor, that's all for me, and I do so second. Thank you. <clears throat> I believe Councillor Tull wishes to speak. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I wanted to speak on this, having the villager casting in my ward, uh, which, of course, is a lot more rural than other elements of, of the borough. I wanted to put on record that I welcome the action taken by the leader and the portfolio holder in challenging this, if you're a resident living out in Kesting, you just do not have the public transport alternatives. Uh, this scheme is being rushed through with little thought for the people it leaves behind. If my maths is correct, if you are a carer, so if you're a low paid worker having to drive between clients, then this is going to be a pay cut of £62.50 a week. Uh, that is the equivalent of paying that charge every day. And as Councillor Bennett said, the scrappage scheme does not go far enough. So the scrappage scheme doesn't go far enough. If you're living in places like Keston, then the public the public transport alternatives aren't there. There are huge amounts of this borough who are going to be left behind by this uh, by this policy for what research shows will have virtually no effect. Um, as Councillor Bengt said, this is a inner London solution uh, being applied to outer London and it just won't work, which is why I fully welcome the action taken by the leader. Thank you. We have Councillor Rollins, wish to speak. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I thought as chairman of the Environment PDS, uh, it would only be right for me to uh, throw my weight in behind the portfolio holder and uh, the leader of the council. As this debate has progressed both tonight and beforehand, it has made me wonder which situation my maternal grandfather would be most a staunch Labour member and a trade unionist would be most disgusted by. His youngest grandson sitting here as a Conservative, <laughs> or a Labour mayor abandoning the very principles the Labour Party has proudly claimed to have stood for for nearly 125 years, and in the process, smashing the poorest in our society with a tax which is not only discriminatory, but it also betrays every reasonable and civil value in our democracy the right for everybody to go about daily life freely. I think that for this one time only, that he would actually be least disgusted by the former. Whilst we see families and the elderly struggle in a cost of living crisis, nurses striking for better pay, and whilst none of us here would begrudge the nurses a pay rise, here we see Sadiq Khan wanted to tax them for doing their job and saving lives, punishing them especially if they live in the outer regions of Greater London, in Kent and Swanley and in Surrey, etc., for being too poor to afford a new car. Taxing them and every other family for simply trying to live. If there was an indisputable climate emergency, if there was a genuine threat to air quality, which was to have catastrophic... I'll carry on anyway. <laughs> if... If all of their options have been, of encouragement have been exhausted, if ULES was the absolute last resort without hesitation, if ULES was to be the saviour of humanity, then this debate would be very different. However, it is not. ULES is the last resort being taken as the first course of action. Instead of encouraging people to consider changing their habits in a free and open manner, what we are now seeing is the unravelling of socialism in its darkest form, unleashing its sinister bully boy tactics to enforce conformity upon us all, aided by the stasification of the outer regions with a surveillance system monitoring who is being good and compliant 
and who needs to be punished and taxed in what will be the case on many occasions, the working class is simply being too poor to conform. This ULA's proposal, Madam Mayor, is no more than the left hurling ideological warfare at ordinary people. The proposal here involves robbing the nurses to pay calm, robbing the sick and the vulnerable who need hospital care, robbing businesses, tradesmen, parents who have to travel mile after mile just to send their child to school. This act is Labour once again proving that they are no longer the party for working people and confirming that they are willing to abandon their traditional supporters, many of whom voted for members opposite last May and for Sadiq Khan before that. Thankfully, for those members of the public who have just become the victims of this great betrayal, this Conservative Council, one of the greenest boroughs in the country, with the most ambitious carbon neutral targets, is led by a man who refuses to abandon anyone. Councillor Smith, our leader and his administration, will stand up and fight to defend all voters, yeah. including Labour voters who voted for Khan and are now being persecuted by this ridiculous scheme. This is a, le this is a leader prepared to go above and beyond the call of duty, standing up for those who can't stand up for themselves in the face of hostility designed to repress, tax, and in what I fear will be quite an often case, destroying businesses and livelihoods. <coughs> Our leader will continue, along with Councillor Bennett and other members of his administration, to challenge this cruel and most wicked of injustices against the most vulnerable in our communities, who shall receive from the Mayor little, if any, recompense for their trouble. For those in the Chamber who are fully supportive of Mayor Khan and his raid on this borough and beyond, just remember, when the staff in our hospitals have been forced into exile by this folly, when shops, traders and our local economy is crushed as a result of Khan resurrecting a new Berlin Wall along our outer borders, it will be as a result of not supporting this administration as it holds the Mayor to account, along with the four other local authorities trying to return democracy and order to City Hall. I would like to finish by saying, as our leader continues this just and worthy fight, which I do wish will ultimately be successful, I do hope that in time, if necessary, the ministers of His Majesty's Government will intervene and assist Councillor Smith and Councillor Bennett and the administration in standing up against Khan and this vile aggression. I'm sure that I can speak on behalf of this entire side of the chamber, as well as some members on the opposite side, some who are who are publicly supportive of Councillor Smith's actions, others who are perhaps staying silent to appease political lines, that we're all behind you and you hold our utmost support regardless of the outcome of the judicial review, which, when you take into consideration, it's costing £140,000. If everybody chipped in, including the Lib Dems, it would be excellent value for money. Whether ULES is scrapped or involves into an even crueler a more destructive paper mile scheme. Councillor Smith, history will determine that it was actually you and not Sadiq Khan who was on the right side of history. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Madam Mayor, as a, a small point of order, um, I'm going to mention to Councillor Rowlands that we've done the uh, pay awards earlier, the members' allowances. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but th thank you, nevertheless. Thank you, thank you very much. That was nice and short. So, um, Councillor Owen, do you have a short comment to make? We're nearly midnight, just saying, just in case anybody wants to. It is brief, Madam Mayor, and it's very important that if we look at section 143 of Greater London Authority Act 1999, which gives Khan his power, um, this describes the direction by the Secretary of State. And it says, where the Secretary of State considers that the transport strategy or any part of it is inconsistent with national policies relating to transport, and B, the inconsistency is detrimental to any area outside Greater London, he may direct the Mayor to make such revisions of the transport strategy in order to remove the inconsistency as may be specified in the direction. So a question I'd like to ask our leader, we've seen the motion, 
are we also lobbying the Secretary of State, Mark Harper, and what responses are we getting? Thank you. Would you like to answer that, Councillor Smith? Madam Mayor, uh, briefly, our MPs are in discussion with their ministerial colleagues at Westminster. Thank you. Councillor Grant, you wish to speak? Just briefly. Very briefly. I thought I'd get us over into the new day, but um, <laughs> it strikes me that if you're wealthy, it's likely that the car you drive is already compliant. If it's not, it's likely that you can afford to purchase a car that is. The ULES taxes specifically those who do not have this option, the poorest in our society. The ULES pushes the poorest people closer to breaking. I cannot support this. Councillor Price. Thank you for the motion. Thank you, Madam Mayor, as well. <clears throat> With regards to ULES, I believe in action. You are taking some action there. Um, we have got a meeting coming up with the Deputy Mayor of London, so any comment on you, Les, I'm going to wait till after I've had that meeting with him. What I am concerned about with this um, motion, though, is really the last bit that was put onto it of saying that this council will put £140,000 into it. And earlier, when the Lib Dems put their motion forward and their budget motion forward on there, Councillor Smith advised them that it needs to be taken through committees. This is £140,000. It's more than you were proposing to spend from our Lib Dems. I would just suggest we need to take this through committees. Order. We didn't even need to bring it to council tonight. We did so for transparency purposes. It can go through automated spending under certain allowances that senior officers have just wanted to put it on the table for transparency purposes. Councillor Iger. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Well, I don't think it should go through that, actually, um, Leader, I'm afraid. I think it should go through a committee. It should actually go through an environment committee, which I sit on, and I have certainly never seen this £140,000 mentioned. Uh, and it's quite irritating when we, are, as will councillors ask for many items which we are always refused. So it will be really interesting to have that properly approved. Um, and also, the other thing is, is I was listening to uh, Councillor Rowlands talking about this ambitious uh, uh, neutral, uh, neutral carbon target. Sorry, I'm getting tired. And uh, Councillor Cuthbert as well. But you know what would be really nice, Councillor Rowlands, is if we if we were to see the Air Quality Action Plan, which every time I sit on the Environment Committee is pushed forward and forward and forward on the work, work, work Forward Plan, and is now in September, which is quite surprising considering obviously ULES is. Uh, detail for August. So uh, I would actually really like to see um, the Council's Air Quality Action Plan, and I mention it about 10, 20 times a week, I feel. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Marlow is next. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just very briefly, it's quite extraordinary that Councillor Igo thinks that um, officers should ignore the Council's constitution when determining which process needs to be spent money instead to go with her personal reckoning. Utterly bizarre. Um, and the other point to make, Madam Mayor, is not only is this very good value m money for Bromley residents if the JR succeeds, but the economic impact of ULIS on Bromley will be overwhelmingly negative, particularly for traders and businesses in the settlements on the edge, which will lose out massively to those just over the border. So as resources portfolio holder, this is excellent value for money and I support it. Thank you, Councillor Ross. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Bromley Lib Dem Group supports the Council in opposing the current implementation of ULES in Outer London due to come in this August. So I hope that's very clear. There's been some confusion this evening. So um, we agree with the Mayor of London's ambition to clean up London's air. It's the right policy, but it's being implemented badly. The Mayor must increase the scrappage scheme for Outer London. He must invest in public transport in Outer London I mean, here we fight to save services from cuts. We're not getting new ones and improved ones. And he must give out of London more time and not force this through during a cost of living crisis. However, we cannot stand on a platform with Bromley's Conservatives and support this motion. 
because we don't believe they genuinely support our commitment to improve air quality. What the portfolio holder explained earlier, I do not think is enough. The um, failure to support school streets does not show a commitment to air quality. There is also a willful blindness of air quality issues that impact the traffic congested urban areas of our borough. Crystal Palace, Annerley, Beckenham, Penge. These aren't the same as Darwin and other places um, down. It is a mistake to claim that Bromley has the cleanest air quality in London. How could we know with such low levels of monitoring, often providing modelled results? Borough-wide averages are meaningless when we've got a borough so split between rural and urban traffic problems. We know that older people, like the young, are more susceptible from illness from poor air quality. And Bromley has one of the highest older populations in London. The South Circular, close to where Ella Kissy Debra lived, is only 1.5 miles from Bromley Borough residents. 1.5 miles. It's on our doorstep. The same air pollution. Conservatives in Bromley, Cities Hall and Westminster must start taking air quality seriously and stop using it to score political points against the Mayor of London when poor air quality is literally killing people. I know Council Force that will disagree with me. It's a disgrace that the government set up a fund of £880 million to support cities that are implementing clean air zones. They gave £100 million to Manchester, yet not a single penny is coming to London. I personally take umbrage that the, of the Conservative disenfranchisement of young people. First, it was voter ID where... Young personal uh, travel ID is not acceptable, but older people's travel ID is. And now this consultation, where City Hall Conservatives have made it sound underhanded that the young people who were underrepresented in the consultation were rightly targeted to increase engagement. If it were the other way round and older people were underrepresented, I'm sure the Conservatives would have been clamouring how unfair that was. Bromley Council should not be wasting taxpayers' money on legal cost-fighting ULES. Lib Dem run Saturn are opposing the scheme just as hard, but they're not throwing £140,000 away to make a political point. This money should be spent on our residents on the much-needed schemes to improve air quality and road safety. Thank you. Councillor Smith. Yeah, Madam Mayor, very, very briefly. Um, we can agree to disagree on this clearly. Uh, £140,000, we think, is top, top of the uh, range of what it might cost if we lose. Madam Mayor, £140,000 is roughly, roughly £1 per household once. The cost of allowing ULES to go through uncontested would cost tens of thousands of Bromley households, quite literally thousands of pounds every year, and it would cost individual businesses, those that could stay in business, those that don't go bankrupt, those that aren't pushed out of jobs, 10, 20, 30, 60,000 pounds to buy a new kit. It's a fight worth fighting. It's a just cause. Yeah. That's why we're doing it, and Madam Mayor, we're happy to move to a recorded vote at your leisure. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Believe it or not, I've still got some hands going up. Oh, nothing as well. Oh, dear. Right. Um, Councillor Slater, did you have your hand up? Uh, I did. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> I just wanted to say that's really confused me what the Lib Dem <laughs> position is, because it seems to change every time you come into the chamber. I mean, you said the air here is very dangerous. Uh, Councillor Arnold before said it's toxic. I believe that you all have young families. If you genuinely believe that to be the case, then it's wrong for you to be living in Bromley. Uh, the ward I represent, half of it is farmland, and people driving through there are now going to be charged the daily charge. Um, I just wanted to make one uh, note here. In their draft budget, Labour wanted £120,000 a year for clean air monitors. If this was about clean air, wouldn't Sadiq Khan want to install a few air monitors to prove it is a success? 
I think it's not about clean air at all. It's about taking money from hardworking people that can least afford it. Councillor Fulthrop. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Mayor. I oh, know, they're, they're all going, oh. Honestly, people keep putting their hands up. I can't help first it. Of all, I must apologise to contributing yet more to the air pollution going on tonight. Um, uh, uh, to, uh, but, uh, Three more there, minutes till we've hit are. midnight, honestly. Um, uh, what I will say is people have been talking about you, Les, you, Les, you, Les. It's nothing to do with you, Les. Ask me why it is that TfL have at this very moment got a consultation going on on road pricing that they want to introduce in 2025. You might say today, oh, your car is ULES compliant or whatever it, it, it is. However, Madam Mayor, in 2025, it won't be because Mr Khan will change, change the, uh, the lines again. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll say, actually, that boundary's changed. We now say every car will do it. That's not relevant it. to the actual it is. motion. It's, Can we? It's, it's explaining what the what he means by ULES and tries to to uh, to do things. So, so Madam Mayor, the, we have to take that into account because actually, that's the future of where this is going. It's going to hit our people regardless of their emissions. And the other question, because air quality has also been talked about, is, and the mayor always talks about 4,000 people dying. That's a lie. You know, in terms of the people that have actually died, I think we know about one case, as someone mentioned, on the South Circular. In this borough, when I asked the question, nobody had died as a result of air pollution. So, actually... If it's about air quality, as other colleagues have said, then why is it that nobody's died from air pollution in this borough? That's really, really important. And as for the, the, the Liberal Democrats, uh, uh, Madam Mayor, they're so passive, they can't make up their mind. One minute they're voting for you, the next minute they're going to vote against it. wonder what they're doing next week. It depends on the flavour of the month, I guess. And they sit there and say, oh, don't worry, Bromley, because Sutton are going to do nothing about it and just, uh, oh, put their hands on the air. That's a cool thought. Thank you very much. Right. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take three more questions. No, thank you very much. This is oh, three more comments. Yes, thank you very much for correcting I, me. I After five hours sitting in the seats. Thank you very much. OK, Councillor Arnold. Thank you. Um, my question is around the wording at the very end of the, the, the um, motion, uh, agree funding in the region of 140,000. Um, and Councillor Smith, you've partially anticipated my question, actually, because you've said that um, you believe that that's the upper limit for spending, and I believe you'd be earnest in that. So my question is really, um, has there been some discussion of contingency if the spending starts going up and up? Um, and have you thought about an upper limit? Because as we know, legal proceedings can get very costly. Uh, and that might be the case now, but as time goes on, it might go up. So just a word, please, on contingency. Thank you. Two more. Councillor Geo, and then we're going to Councillor Cartwright, and we're done. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd first like to congratulate Councillor Romans. I think for the first time ever in a debate, Councillor Forthrop has not come across as the most uh, em emotional and um, conspiracy theorist uh, speaker. <laughs> The stars of vacation of surveillance and new Berlin Wall. My goodness. I mean, I, I, I'm astonished. I mean, I, before I came in, I thought perhaps this would be a, a sixth form uh, politics debate. But actually, I think it's not risen far beyond the level of GCSE students. Um, we are clearly not going to vote for this. Your, your motion is essentially calling us, on us to support you saying that the Mayor of London is lying. Now, you're testing that in court, but we, of course, are not going to support that, just as if we put a motion calling on the various lies and the various things that Boris Johnson, you wouldn't have voted for that. So let's be clear, like, at the end of the day, it's politics. It's, it's the, the nature of the ULES. We could spend all night debating air quality. And as we have in multiple occasions in the past, we put forward one set of statistics and about premature deaths. You put forward another. And then Council takes and talks about air moving around. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's past midnight. Let's get on with it. The reality is you will 
spend this money, which you believe is worth fighting this lawsuit. We don't. We think you're going to lose. Ultimately, you will either be right or wrong. So let's wait and see. Thank you. Right, Councillor Cartwright, you have the right <laughs> to finish this debate. Well, that's uh, a, a, a great uh, privilege. Thank you very much. I will be brief. <laughs> I, I promise you. Um, this is uh, this this is really worrying. Uh, we were talking about effects on business and and people, which is absolutely correct. It's going to be dire for those. But one other thing that I'd like to point out: our emergency services, our police, our fire service, our ambulance people, our nurses, most of those, in my experience, can't afford to live in London. They live out of London, in the suburbs of, of uh, Kent, of uh, Surrey, and all around London. Those people, when they come on night duty, will have to pay the charge on the way in and the charge on the way out. So instead of £12.50, it's £25 per trip on there. And I think that's, that is a real concern. Um, the, uh, the only way to stop Mr Khan is to take legal action, because otherwise passive resistance that you say you're, you're supporting people who are going to have to pay this, that passive resistance just will not work. So I support this. Thank you. The last word is the right to reply from Councillor Nicholas Bennett. Thank you. Uh, Madam Mayor, we've had a fascinating debate. Uh, I'm going to trade with Councillor Rowlands, my socialist ancestry. My grandfather was the features editor of the Daily Worker. My great-grandfather was the founder member of the Communist Party. I think it trumps Councillor Rowlands' grandfather. Uh, we've had a very good debate, and Councillor Rowlands made a very spirited speech. Um, I'm reminded of um, Colonel Doyle's book, The Silver Blaze, a little short story. The dog that didn't bark in the night. The mystery was, why didn't the dog bark? Why didn't the Labour Party support Mayor Khan and stand up and say My, Mayor Khan's right? They kept quiet about it. They've lost the will. They know they're in the wrong. They know that this is an issue which really concerns their voters as well as our own. Councillor Ross, we had a classic bit of Liberal Democracy really there just now, didn't we? You know, they sit on the fence till the steel gets up their backside. They're on one side or the other. Last July, they voted against the motion, merely on the question of the scrappage scheme. They voted against the Conservative motion. Today, they're going like that. I'm reminded of St. Gustin of Hippo in his book, Confessions. He said, oh, Lord, make me good, but not yet. And that's the Liberal Democrat line. We want to be on both sides. And it is, of course, nonsense. The reality is, the reason why we're so concerned about this consultation is no use saying, oh, the mayor just wanted to make sure the young people had their say. A consultation is just that. The mayor cannot intervene and start trying to sway the vote. That's called predetermination. And indeed, it's one of the five grounds we've taken him to a JR. The mayor has to remain neutral. And the reality was, we now know from the 200 pages, he was not neutral and he was trying to fix the vote. And he even failed to get the young people on his side. So that's why it is so important that when you have a consultation set out in law, it should be held properly uh, and, 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 and with due regard to uh, the public probity. Madam Mayor, I'm not going to go about air pollution. I've been alive since the Clean Air Act in 1956 changed this country. Ever since then, air has been getting cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. And we know in Bromley that the air in this borough 60% of the borough's green belt. The idea that the air in Bromley is amongst the dirtiest in London is complete. It, it defies common sense. We know that we are the second best air quality in the whole of London and is getting better and better. Madam Mayor, this is good money. This is Bromley leading from the front again. In 1982, we challenged the then Labour leader of the GLC over Fair's Fair and we won. We're doing it again now. We are leading those other boroughs to challenge this mayor's disgraceful manipulation of the consultation. And whether we win or not, it's good value for the people of Bromley to show that this council is on their side. Madam Mayor, if I may, uh, we would like a recorded vote on this. Thank you. Thank you. Any five of you on your feet, please? Thank you.
Or you can all stand up, stretch your legs. Thank you very much. Okay, I now put this motion to the vote. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, members, would you please indicate how you wish to vote on this motion? Councillor Adams? Against. Councillor Andrews? For. Councillor Ar Arnold? Against. Councillor Bainbridge? For. Councillor Bans? Councillor Bear? For. Councillor Bennett? For. Councillor Kim Bossing? Definitely for. <laughs> Councillor Mike Bossing? For. Councillor Brock? For. Councillor Cartwright? For. Councillor Casey? Against. Councillor Connolly? Against. Councillor Cuthbert? Four. Councillor Dean? For. Councillor Dunbar? For. Councillor Evans? For. Councillor Forthrop? Aye. Councillor Gabbard? For. Councillor Grant? For. Councillor Gray? Abstain. Councillor Gupta? For. Councillor Harris? For. Councillor Igo? Against. Councillor Arland? Against. Councillor Jack? For. Councillor Jeel? Against. Councillor Jeffries? For. Councillor Joel? For. Councillor Kennedy Brooks? Against. Councillor King? Against. Councillor Laidlaw? For. Councillor Lee? For. Councillor Lima? For. Councillor Marlow? For. Councillor McGregor? Again. Councillor McPartland? Again. Councillor Michael? For. Councillor Onslow? For. Councillor Owen? For. Councillor Page? For. Councillor Price? Again. Councillor Ross? Again. Councillor Rowlands? For. Councillor Slater? For. Councillor Colin Smith? For. Councillor Diane Smith? For. Councillor Mark Smith? For. Councillor Stammers? Councillor Stevens? For. Councillor Stranger? For. Councillor Thompson? Yes. Councillor Tickner? For. Councillor Tannicliffe? For. Councillor Tarrell? For. Councillor Weber? Yes. Councillor Whiffin? I declare the motion carried. Okay. Now this is where I get my own back. I've got five pages of announcements. <laughs> you didn't want home to go through, did you? No, I had to do my announcements, then we do part two. We do it in that order. That's what they've done. This is my script, honestly. Yep, got, it's goes. confusing if we... If we... <laughs> but I... Oh, dear. Right. But I will run through these very quickly. And in all seriousness, I do want to say a few thank yous. Um, firstly, I'd like to thank all my colleagues who attended the Holocaust Memorial Day service in January. It's important to recognise and to come together as a group and a community to remember and acknowledge the, the atrocities of the past and to work together to ensure that that never happens again. Thank you also to everyone that attended my whiskey tasting. It was a great evening. I believe we all thoroughly enjoyed ourselves and what we remember. Um, but most importantly, we raised uh, over £1,200 for my charities, which is really quite amazing. And seriously, last Friday, we held our Ukraine Remembrance Survey for service. It was a moving and poignant service as we came together as a community to mark one year since Putin's launched his full-scale invasion atrocities against Ukraine. We were able to show our ongoing solidarity and support for our Ukraine friends and our neighbours. We continue to stand by them. That evening, we then held an annual quiz. And as always, our legendary quiz master, Major Ian Payne, who is still a major pain, ensured we all had a really enjoyable and great fun evening, raising, again, more money for the charities. A date for your diary, if you would, please. A save the date for the charity dinner on the 6th of April. It'll be at the Honourable Artillery Company up in town, up in London. The information or booking tickets will be out shortly and you can either book via Eventbrite or you can book directly with the office if you want to save the pennies that Eventbrite charge you. I would love to see as many of you as possible there as it will be my final mayoral event. And obviously don't forget to buy your Flyer Spitfire prize draw tickets which will be drawn on the 21st of April. Now, we get to the final part of our meeting and will need to be conducted in a closed session for the remaining item on our agenda. I move that the press, I think he left ages ago actually, but anyway, I move that the press and the public be excluded during the consideration of item 18 
as it's likely, in view of the nature of the business to be transacted or the nature of the proceedings, that if members of the press and public were present, there would be disclosure to them of exempt information. Is that seconded? Thank you. And the live stream will now stop.